head like this. Yeah, good job, Connor. Yeah. It, did your soundboard not work? I heard nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Silent but deadly. I actually farted that time. Welcome to the Prince Division, everybody. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? We're back. At the, at the end of a, a three-week stint of nothing nonstop Prince Division. Smell yeah, everybody. How are y'all feeling tonight? You feeling good? Having a good weekend? Ready to watch some people play some Dungeons and Dragons? Gugans and Gargans. Gungan and Gungan and Gungans. Can I just say something before we start real fast? I was going to mention this before we went live, but I realized I forgot to mention it. Mm. Draco messaged me this morning and she's like, look what I found. Someone was selling the rare Colossal Red Dragon from, I believe, 4th edition. Like the big one like the $500 one. <laughs> and she goes, hey, I found someone selling this locally and it took all of my willpower to say no. Don't, dangerous hobby, <laughs> very dangerous hobby. Mm -hmm. It's selling for 800 Dude, it's $800 Holy on shit. eBay. Dude, it's $800 on eBay. Damn it. Don't do it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I already ordered Tiamat. I can't do both. Oh, man. Holy moly. Don't get into miniatures. They're expensive. And I should have just gotten into drugs. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> As in the one Mercer used? Maybe. It's huge. I know it's massive. It's It's like a really big one. I mean, it's, it's literally an ancient red dragon, is what it is. <sighs> Plus, I feel like they're going to re-release the Colossal Dragons, because, like, they already released a white one with the Avernus one, so... Maybe they'll release some because they have that the new book coming out. But anyway, I'm sorry. We should do introductions. I apologize. Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead and go down the list. Uh... Ta -ta -ta. Arkhoff, where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkhoff. Been getting back into streaming with the PS4 Spider-Man, picked up Tales of Arise, and we'll be going back into God of War and all that good stuff soon. And that's about it. A uh, woohoo! Bosco, where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me at Bosco on both Instagram and Twitter, and on twitch.tv slash Bosco. Why did you leave Oakley open? Okay, he missed. Uh, I'm also playing the brand new NBA 2K22, which I have thoughts about. Uh, I won't bore you with those thoughts, but I do have thoughts on it. Michael Jordan just dunked on your whole family. He showed up late for the block, but he got there right in time for the poster. Oh shit. Mom, are yep. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I green the release. Hot Next. damn. Sarah, where can they find you? What are you up to? I'm on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with an E, Willia, and not much. Just, just trying to not be stressed. I'm fine. I don't Fair have to chill. <laughs> uh, Monty, where can they find you? And you what can are you find me. You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. Um, streams are on hiatus. My personal streams are on hiatus. Um, I'm going to be traveling to LA to punch Bosco in the face. Um, and also hang out with Sarah and Caitlin because they're nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll be probably tweeting the, the traveling. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so definitely, uh, keep your eyes on my, my Twitter. Also, I'll check out my Discord as well. Um, I school I talk a lot on there sometimes, and yeah. Excellent. They can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil, where I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, Tuesdays, usually either tabletop or trading card game day, uh, except we played some AI Dungeon, uh, and it was legendary this week. 
Uh, we looked for my buddy Luke, and it turns out the Connor clones escaped again, and they, well, we had to put them down. Uh, it was a legendary journey. I, I, I recommend you all go watch the VOD. It is quite funny. And Friday, it's Friday Funhouse, where I play a bunch of fun games with my friends. We played some Amogus for the first time in a long time. Uh, Saturday, playing the Yakuza series. Next Saturday, we'll be starting Yakuza 5 Remastered. Just beat 4 today, and it was pretty cool. Uh, and tomorrow, I'm probably going to be playing some more Wildermyth. Uh, excellent game. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. Uh, another game I highly recommend is Dead House Sonata. Uh, I'm creator of Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen, uh, and uh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem comes Dead House Sonata, the action RPG where you play the dead to fight the living. Uh, if any of that sounds interesting to you, please click the link that I just posted, or that was just posted in the chat. And uh, be sure to look up all the information that is available on it. And if you're so inclined, you can purchase a Founders Pack at that link as well, so that money gets thrown back to me. Uh, and also check out my DM's Guild, uh, where I release 5th edition subclasses. Uh, the Accursed Fighter should be coming out sometime next week at the latest. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you like uh, Berserk or Artorias-inspired fighter subclass, then the Accursed Fighter is the one for you. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'd like to thank our wonderful sponsor for this episode, Ooh. Die Hard Dice. Ugh. Shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, oh shit, oh god. Sorry. <laughs> Connor. Connor. Yes, Connor, I have yes. a question for you. Connor, can we uh -huh. did they did they announce the new dice sets coming out or are those still secret? The new dice sets? I mean uh, I don't know if they're in the store yet. I don't wanna I don't wanna get us I don't want Diana to take my kneecaps. If you're talking about the one you just talked to me about, I think they I think they have other sets of that particular one. How about on, you not gonna... talk about anything you're not sure about? How about that? Yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna that look it up like real fast. There's a safe bet, but you can. Aside they're out. From that, they're out. They're out. They're out. They're out. I just looked. They're out on the website right now. Yeah. So the reticle dice. The yeah, praise uh, Oriara. They're robot dice, and they're so cool looking. Yeah, they're sort of like steampunky, sort of cog looking dice. They're really cool. Uh, be sure to check those out. Uh, the, those are alongside their uh, metal dice and their Dracona set as well. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for that. They've got all sorts of different styles and colors for their new reticle sets uh, that are out now. Uh, and for all your other dice and dice accessories needs, head on over to dieharddice.com. And if you use the code THEUNEXPECTABLES, you can save 10% off your entire order. And with that, we can go ahead and get started reading on some bits and sibs as soon as I hit enter on this tweet. All right. Let's see what we got here. Da -da 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 -da. Just a few morons. Thank you for the 100 bits. It was supposed to be floored. Wait. Oh, no. That was three days ago. Never mind. Uh, oh. Dragon Alphabet 51. Thank you for the 16 months. Captain Actually. Thank you for the 18 months. Constable Mutton. Thank you for the 18 months as well. Katana Cultist. Thank you for the two months of Prime. Back to back Prince Division. Let's go. Okay. Uh, Big Art 61991. Thank you for the 17 months. Heck yes. Let's go. Brian Mate, thank you for the five months. HMDS, thank you for the 15 months. Wolf Rook, thank you for the 16 months. Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 105 bits. Uh, the best part of last session was this. Uh, there's a damn girl. I can't think of his... Uh, I can't think of his actual... Uh, all I can think of are wrong names. So what the hell is his name? Uh, out of nowhere at 4 a.m. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Zenlita, thank you for the 200 bits. A TTRPG set in the Star Wars universe would be called Gungans and Dragoons. 
Uh, Go Mored, thank you for the 16 months of Prime. Nene 2021, thank you for the 12 months. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to he be here and watch you guys. Here's to an awesome fight and hopes and prayers that Bryant doesn't get himself killed. Alk27, Alk27, thank you for the 14 months. I'm back, Connor. Probably still can't read my name right, right? Uh, probably not, but it is fun to say it the way I do it. That just reminded me I can't revivify. I gave away the materials for the unpetrification. Yep. yep. Da, da, you, also, da, 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 don't die. you also burnt your spell slot to talk to my bicycle. <laughs> that was perfectly valid. <laughs> I will not hear otherwise. Oh, we're screwed. Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 10 months in a row. Yo, Twitch didn't show the channel was streaming until I refreshed the app. Mad oh, Tom yeah. K, thank you for the 300 bits. I unfortunately can't stay, but the worst team in college football lost today, Ohio State. So here's some celebration bits. Fantastic, Callum. Thank you for the 100 bits. I had to miss last week's episode. Managed to catch up. And let me say, Trish the motorcycle. I get the reference. A. Hey. Uh, you'll get another reference if you if you look really hard into into some DMC lore right there. Are you going to fill its dark heart with light? No, you'll find something out. Probably about what I am. DZA9000, thank you for the 18 months. Finally catching you guys live. Hope the rolls are in your favor tonight. Fingers crossed. Rolly Bob, thank you for the 18 months. Patriotic Flag Bearer, thank you for the five months. Thanks for all the entertainment. Roman Penguin, thank you for the 15 bits. Or wait, no, the 1,500 bits. That is more than 15. Merrick Cat, thank you for the 13 months of Prime. Apollyon, thank you for the 100 bits. Too Many Fandoms, thank you for the 16 months. Destroyer777, thank you for the 16 months. Didn't have to work on my birthday today, and I get to watch The Unexpectables. It's a good day. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Alawa Bingo, birthday. thank you for the 10 months. Oh, man, my first live show in weeks. Looking forward to it. Good luck tonight, officers and bronze boots. Sorry. If I remember that wrong, insert obligatory Deadhouse Sonata joke here. Yes. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the 10 bits. Hype. Erwin Elf, thank you for the 15 bits. I know the feeling, Monty. I got some minis coming in soon. Ragnaroth, thank you for the 18 months. River Rat, thank you for the 50 bits. Hello from New Orleans. My power came back on in time to listen to the Prince Division. Excellent. Hope that good luck keeps on getting gooder. Mad Tom K, thank you for the 100 bits. For clarification, by worst, I mean most toxic. Ah. I have some opinions, but I won't say them. Big Bad Shadow Man, thank you for the 18 months. Is it bad that I imagine Kel Zoran's dad is just Rick Moranis in the courtroom scene in Ghostbusters 2? I have no idea who that is. We get Winston Payne was the kind of my mental image for Kel's dad. Oh like no, age, Kel's that dad guy. Is Winston Payne. That guy slept with a dragon. Like young Kel's dad would have been Phoenix. Shit, if that yeah. guy can get some, I might actually have some chance. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> It's great because uh, your your dad is. Or maybe I shouldn't mention this. You might find out in the game. Actually, I won't say anything else. Uh, I don't know if Kel mentioned breaker. it. So. John, thank you for the tier two, 18 months, 18 months. Yeah, baby. How many clones do you have, Connor? I I also think I see one getting away. Uh, I don't know because they weren't my idea. Apparently someone took my DNA when I was 16 and it was just been making me's causing havoc. I got to put them down. Kukalanish, thank you for the 1000 bits. Time to rescue cool uh, a cool bike. Good luck today. Hopefully, Roll20 doesn't kill anybody else. Freedom13, thank you for the four months. After three months, I'm caught up on the Prince Division and slowly catching up on the Unexpectables. Happy to catch you live while I plot my own campaign. Duke Will, thank you for the 2,200 bits. Any advice for someone who wants to get into voice acting? Oh, uh, did... Should I answer? Oscar, I, yeah, can, I, can, I can 
I could give a blanket answer. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of resources online. One that I used when I was first starting out was a voice acting club. Uh, be sure to head on over there, and you can you can find a lot of different resources to help you get started, including both paid and non paid jobs as well. Not sponsored. Uh, you can go to D Bradley Baker's website, How to Be a Voice Actor. He's got lots of good info. That is also true. <laughs> Replica Rabbits, thank you for the six months of Prime. Time to fight some devils. Doctor, wait, D D Zerikta, thank you for the two thousand six hundred bits. Hey guys, just wanted to donate to your cause. Oh, we just wanted to donate because you're all awesome and have wanted to for a long time. Uh, huh. Last thing, Monty, the city of Rampoon is so enthralling, I couldn't think up the character I would wish to play in it. Uh, a, dr a drow druid in the ouch ward who grows crops on the tops of roofs over the mountain. Oh, Earth. that's great. I like that. I love rooftop yeah. gardens. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 100 bits. Fun news, my family and I are currently trying to buy a house to escape our terrible landlord, uh, otherwise known as Landlord, and stop paying almost 2K a month in rent, which is luck. Nice. Good luck. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the 18 months of Tier 3. Oh my goodness gracious. Werewolf in a Speedo, thank you for the 100 bits. So the end game of all of this shit is uh, the D&D equivalent of a Cenobite. What's a, a Cenobite? I've heard that word before, but I don't know what it is. Oh, Pinhead. right. Pinhead. Pinhead and all his buddies. Is that, mm, I'm, I'm Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> that is that what would Phobos be awful. was based on. That one shot with Bob. Connor. Oh, jeez. I love Hellraiser. It's one of my favorite horror movies. Robomom, thank you for the 100 bits. I need this so much tonight. Yes, and unfortunately there was a there was a loss of an of an animal friend, I remember. Sorry to hear that. Uh Shion the Drifter, thank you for the twelve months. Big peace pipe. Thank you for the one hundred bits. Does anyone think Die Hard Dice gets angry if we insist on calling them the Oriara dice sets? <laughs> I just, I they're, ro it. they're robot dice, really. It's like, it's like a steampunk yeah. kind of eberron -y. Like, it could be anything. Yeah. I just, like, listen, if you're playing a Warforged or an Artificer, I mean, come on. It's, like, molto bene. It's really good looking. Mm. That's, like, I love Die Hard Dice's dice, but when I saw those sets, I was like, oh! <laughs> like, I legitimately was like, please, Diana, please. Messenger of Chaos, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Is it a spoiler, or did the team miss the Vampire Skull? It's not a spoiler, because we're on the latest episode. Flustered Bun, thank you for the 200 bits. I missed half of my first D&D session ever because of life problems, but my DM was very forgiving. How are you all? Oh, it's good to hear. Uh, D. Zerikta, thank you for the additional 111 bits. Fantastic, Callum. Thank you for the 100 bits. If Dante wanted to sue someone for copyright infringement, would he send them a DMCA? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Celebrating my birthday, so I'll catch the VOD. In the meantime, sorry, not sorry for the Giants beating the Cubs, Bosco. Two kobolds in a trench coat. Thank you for the 100 bits. My kids are back in school, so I have to wake up at a reasonable hour on weekdays. I'll have to catch the Unexpectables on the VOD. But I'm glad to catch you on Saturdays. Steve Anders, thank you for the 100 bits. Some bits to celebrate me moving soon. Going to from uh, North Carolina to... I'm, I don't remember what MD is. Maryland? Maybe. I yeah. whenever it comes to your guys's like abbreviations for your states, it drives me nuts. You're not the only one <laughs> to spend time with my dad and get into a cybersec job. Ooh, interesting. Duke will thank you for the 602 bits. Thanks for the advice, guys. You rock. And finally, Priest of Ether, thank you for the 11 months of Prime Prince Division for a whole month. This is the best back to school present I could have ever asked for. 
Yeah, by the way, uh, school's back in session. Um, I hope you people who are in school, I hope things go well and everything is good and you study hard and all that fun jazz, so. And please make certain to get some rest. That's what yes. that they force you in. Also, you know, I always say this around finals and I'm, I'm gonna say it again here. If you have to choose between listening to the show and making sure you don't fail school, Please don't fail school. I was a student once too. We'll always be here if you want to listen to us. So yeah, best luck for all of our, our student listeners and new student listeners and concurrent student listeners and good luck. Eat, sleep, do laundry. Don't procrastinate. Yes. All right, we good to get going? I believe so. Yeah. All right, let's get started with Watch, you should take that. I, I, I had good grades in university, Mr. Uh, Bosco. I, in fact, was a very good student and had a really high GPA, and I'm going to boast about that. Sorry, I got salty there for a second. <laughs> I did university 12 years of it in Azkaban. Didn't you also water a fake cactus for most of that? All right, let's play uh, D and D. Let's let's not let's not dwell on things. A cactus? Why? Shut up, Sarah. Don't ask questions. Connor. <laughs> God damn it. I can't take you I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> okay. Well, reeling back Sarah. When last we left my brain a second to figure it out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when last we left our officers, you guys are currently on the hunt for a cure for your petrified companion, Tannis. You managed to find a high level caster in the form of Tank, a tech romancer who works in specifically sentient mechanical objects. By bringing on his friend, Dalcom Brass Boots, the party is now searching for an object in exchange for the casting of the greater restoration spell for their companion. The party was guided to the Cut Trail, a location where people who are not aligned with Baron Jamar and the Devil Demon Ward can hide out in relative safety. Needing to traverse the tunnels of such an area to get to a specific shop, Frank's Auto Shop, to procure the object for Tank, the party now heads into the twisting, winding pathways underneath not only an ancient old city, but also an old condemned part of the Devil Ward that is home to the remaining devils who were not ousted out by Baron Jamar. As the party procured a map from a rather friendly fiendish creature in the form of, I believe his name is Rachnom, if I'm not mistaken. The party now has a map and an idea of a direction to get to, to procure this object from the hands of a chain devil. And as we return to the Prince Division, you guys look out to the darkened sewer chambers, the darkened abandoned rail train chambers ahead of you. As you guys proceed forward, there are two guards on either side. Uh, one is a drow, the other one appears to be a human of some kind. They're kind of wearing like a, like a biker helmet. They're wearing kind of like makeshift armor made out of like tires and... Uh, other bits of metal, and they're brandishing sort of these glaive-like spears that are made in such a fashion as well. And as you guys proceed forward, they just kind of give a slight side glance to you, but relatively ignore you. They seem a bit more focused on things coming rather than going. Go will wave. They give a little nod. There we go. So... What is your marching order? Kel is taking up the rear once more. Okay, Kel, you're all the way behind. I'm in the front or near it. Okay. 
I'm usually next to Kel. In front of Kel. Kel. I guess Brian, third. Where do you wish to be? The front. All right. Delcom and Bryant are in the He's front. He's behind me. Okay. <laughs> and if I get tired, I'm going to lean my elbow on his head because he's the perfect height for a stool. <laughs> All right. So, with Bryant leading the way, it is pitch dark. Who does not have dark vision? None of us, except the dwarf. I don't. But uh, Sarah I has goggles, have though. Goggles. Hence, hence me leading the pack. Um, Actually, to be fair, Gibby will hold out the goggles to Bryant since he is in the front and Nope. Sort of gesture. Do you want these? Nope. I mean, I'll looking stay, at the map... I'll, st I'll stay with the stool. Looking at the map, realistically, how long are we going to be traveling? At least a day, potentially. Ah, uh, so daylight's pointless. Yeah. A light <sighs> spell, or a dancing light spell, or a flashlight Wait a second. What about great. a fucking torch? Yeah, you guys can use yeah. flashlights. You guys should have flashlights. In I have your a car. cell phone. It has a flashlight built into it. That I works. I have an yeah. actual torch sure as we establish lights. Yeah, but fuck your torch, Connor. Keep in mind oh. that the monster guy who gave us this also said to use our phones for GPS, so you don't want to drain the battery with well, extra shit. Well, I can't should see, also. So I'm going to use my phone as a flashlight. We should okay. also have flashlights as part of our kit anyway. Yeah, I believe you guys got them, <laughs> so you guys do have flashlights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a certain explorer's pack. I'm so Isn't sorry. Is there a book that's coming out that changes <laughs> Dragonborn? Yeah, Are they actually, giving them dark vision? That's coming out this, or October, I think, or this month. I can't remember. It's the next Ooh. book that's coming out. I'm really excited for it. They had better give Dragonborn dark vision. It might be like Tiefling where they give you options, which I think is, they better give them tales. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. All right. So you guys pull up flashlights, whether it be on your phone or in your pocket, and you guys set out into the sewers. The, the state of the sewers in is, is in great disarray. The rails themselves are rusted over. There's like gravel that's kind of just made these sort of formed puddles. Um, and as you guys proceed deeper and deeper and deeper, the sounds just echo. Every step, every crunch, every breath just echoes across the ceiling. Pick one amongst you to roll a survival check with Sarah. advantage because of the map. Sarah. Who has the highest survival? That's meta. I pick Sarah. Uh, you know what? Fair. I also pick Sarah. Oh, goody. Right. Round number pick. Roll. Guidance and advantage. You have guidance and advantage. Yeah. Survival check. All right. Okay. Do everything, Gibby. Let's go. 16 plus D4. 18. 18. Nice. As you as you look down at the map and you're trying to figure it out, it is a nice map. It's really well laid out as well. It clearly is some sort of like subway, like old. Yes. You're gonna have to click on the map. Oh, right. Did you click? I'm sorry. Map, 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 map. There we go. Um, the thing that's interesting about this map, it appears to be the old railway map for this location, notably as well there are certain points on the map that have like this weird symbol on it and you're trying to figure out what that means and as you're walking and you're about to like kind of take a left or right turn you realize that that symbol means a cave-in and you're like oh we don't want to go that way because that's a dead end you proceed to the left and continue on your way and the quality of the tunnel gets just worse and worse and worse there are times where you are pushing through old wires that have just fallen inwards from the roof rebar that kind of springs down like horrible branches you have to kind of duck under except for you Dalcom. you're fine you're you're the perfect height to not have to worry about. i hate sewer levels it smells fine down here it's not a sewer it's just a little wet there's no, this condensation is, this is my horror game logic talking it's, it's better than water levels that's true i would say metro 2033 kind of vibe Ooh, it's like a subway <laughs> level in the ps1 spider-man <laughs> You do encounter some abandoned rail cars, um, which appear to be lodgings. Um, there are appear to be some people living down here. Um, you see a couple goblin kids who kind of watch as you guys walk past like an open tunnel space. It appears to be like a maintenance area where they would probably work on the trains. Um, and it seems to be some manner of living situation.
But bearing that, do you continue forward? I don't see why not. Yeah. Another don't roll really for have us, a reason to stop. Just assume you have guidance for every survival roll, check. Roll 20 doesn't hate you. That's why I'm making you do it. Uh, you remember two sessions ago. Yeah, you're oh, due, you? all right? Also, that was two sessions ago. Every session sucks for Connor. Roll. <laughs> That's true. Here we go. <laughs> He's not wrong. Advantage again? Yeah, you have advantage because of the map. Okay. 19. 19. Roll. Ooh. As you guys proceed forward. Uh, Wait, is it? <laughs> the holy day was yesterday. As you guys proceed forward, um, the rail kind of disappears beneath the gravel that makes up kind of the ground part of this thing. There's also a lot of water that floods specific chambers. Uh, a lot of the rail is bent and, and twisted. As you guys proceed forward, I would like everyone to make perception checks for me. All right. Let's see what's around here. Woohoo! Soft 20! Fuck nice. you, roll 20! Six. Eighteen. Mm, five. five. Do I still have that? Why are you mad about an eighteen? Because no, you I guidance wasted it on a perception check and not an attack roll. So this you're makes attacking sense. the Give... darkness with your eyes. Dalcom, you're looking at the ground, looking at the, the nature of sort of the <laughs> bend here, and with your dwarven knowledge of stonework, clearly there was some sort of like earthquake or some sort of shift in the ground over time with the foundations. Shoddy work really should have been condemned a thousand years ago. Gibby, you're currently looking at the map and trying to figure out because now, like, a bunch of the channels are like just like splitting off entirely. Kel and Bryant, as you guys are proceeding forward, you hear a noise, kind of like weird chirping and squeaks. Can we tell where it's coming from? With the twenty and the eighteen, yes, it is coming from above you. Yeah, we'll look up. Okay. You have dark vision or are you pointing your flashlight up? It's going to have to be the flashlight. As you point the flashlight up, you see about 30 sets of eyes staring down at you. And the sudden light causes a flock of bats to immediately start panicking and flying away and rushing into you. I need everyone to make dexterity saving throws for That's me. That's why I was Ah, oh, shit. Keep your mouths closed. Don't want to go on the wind. I'm going to Mono Ginobili one of these motherfuckers. 13. Mm, 13. 17. Fuck you, oh. roll 20 with your consistency. <laughs> That's an 18. Consistency. <laughs> this is not Wednesdays. It's okay. Smooth. As the bats, like in a panicked state, and they're, they're quite Whoa. small. They're very cute. But there's hundreds of them, just absolutely hundreds of them, bursting out from all spots where they've been roosting. They all begin to fly and smack into, some of them get tangled in your beard, Delcom. Others kind of get trapped inside of your coat, Brian, as they start squeaking and panicking. And eventually you guys- with get... an 18? Yeah, they don't hurt you though. That's the biggest thing. Like none Will of I you hurt get them? hurt by the bats. No, the bats, ah. like you kind of, you can swing out at them, but they're a giant flock and they just all begin to scatter. And eventually there's a stillness and everything is calm again. <sighs> <sighs> many of them, but they're so damn cute. I'm gonna keep walking, because fuck them. Ugh. I agree. And you kind of fix your hair up a little bit. Delcom, you kind of pull one out of your beard and let it go as it flies God. off. Get on out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna need three baths after this. You didn't give any guano on you, did you? Oh, no. He just starts, like, combing through his beard with his fingers. It's clean, but then you look at the ground and you see your boots and, oh, boy. Uh, Gibby, does, Gibby wants to subtly check her hair as well. Just like, mm. You pat yours down. It's short enough. No issues. Kel couldn't tell due to the scale color. Mm-hmm. You're fine. Maybe it's a good thing Trish didn't follow us down here. Doesn't All like right. her paint job messed up. I don't like having to clean it. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Gibby. Another survival check for me. Okay. With guidance. Thank you. 
Ooh, thank you for the guidance and the uh, advantage as well. Uh, uh, 12. 12. 12. You guys get up to a point where there's a, f- a three-way fork where it looks like the rails <laughs> could change. You look down at the map and you're trying to figure out which ones are the right way to go. But unfortunately, the way the map is detailed, one leads off to a service tunnel that isn't marked and the other two are certain lines. You have two options. You have the service area, you have the middle rail, and you have the right rail. That's three options. Oh, three options. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I can't count. I apologize. Mm. Can we look ahead on the map? Like further along the map and see if it uh, goes, which one goes towards our destination? Looking at the map, and because of the survival check, it's very hard to tell. That's what that check was for. So you have to pick one mm-hmm. randomly. Yeah, mm-hmm. sorry. I mean, I'm, I'll make a choice if nobody wants to. Uh, I lean towards the service tunnel. I mean, when you're in the labyrinth, you stick to the left. I was just going to say... Thank you, Kel. Or Arkov, I guess. The left is the service tunnel, right? Yeah, that's a service tunnel. All right. Uh, with any luck, this won't collapse on us. And if it does, at least it'll be quick. Okay. You guys. No, it won't. You guys head left and begin to make your way forward. And as you walk for about 10 minutes, the quality of the tunnel improves. But there's okay. also something on the walls as you walk forward. Investigation check? Yeah, absolutely. Investigation or arcana of your choice. All of us are just Gibby. Whoever would like to. Oh, they're both actually pretty good. Um, Boy, must be nice. Arcana. 14. I don't know why I bother. Seven. Yeah. As you look at the walls, they appear to be runic in nature. But as for what kind of rune, you're not sure. Can I point that out to Kel and be like, do you know what that's from? Would that prompt another check? I would say roll, hmm, it depends. Do you want to know what the function of the runes could be? That's going to be an arcana check. If you want to know how the runes were made, that's going to be a medicine check. I kind of want to see how they're made. If that's medicine, they'd probably stick out to Cal. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and roll medicine. Nice. Ooh. The runes are a mixture. They're they're differently designed. Um, It appears to be some of the runes are made with bat's blood. Other appear to be made out of some sort of like lizard's blood. Not dragon, but lizard blood. Here's the real question. Can you tell if they've been activated or not? Have they been used? Um, It's hard to say. I would say with the medicine check, I'd say someone else who isn't Gibby, because Gibby already rolled. Give me a Arcana check. Yeah, I was going to ask. I'd like to know what they're for. Mm-hmm. Boy, I hope mm. you're better at Arcana than I am. Go for it, Connor. Maybe. Here I go. Nah. No. <laughs> nope. Weird That's pictures. A four. Come on, defy mm. logic. But defy logic, Ed. Consistency. What? I would laugh so hard if Oscar rolls high on Arcana. He already rolled it. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, he already rolled it. Am I allowed to? You said pick Yeah, one you're allowed person. to. All yeah, right. no. You can do it too. <sighs> you can do it. I mean, I'll do it. As you look at the runes, Brian, like closely. Um, with your flashlight and whatnot, and look at them. There's a lot of an eye motif. It appears to be some sort of divination spell. Right. Has it been activated? I don't. Just that's all I need to know. With that roll, it's it would require some sort of detect magic, unfortunately, to tell. Fucking Gibby, do the thing. Are you asking Gibby? No, no, I'm not. Really? <sighs> I mean, would it make logical sense that Gibby would want to maybe ready it up? I don't want a metagame. I mean, you could also just have it prep. You normally prep it wherever we go. 
I did prep it, but that was it's been way past ten minutes at this point. I had a prep oh, yeah, when we walked in, so but I. But I mean, you can again. ritual it while we're walking. Uh, I would want us to stop and let me do it because you don't know what's going to activate this shit. That also works. Go for it. All right. Um, I'm gonna signal everyone and just be like, I don't like the looks of this. Let me get back up to tech magic. Give me ten minutes. <clears throat> All right. Take ten, I guess. Ding done. All right. Some of the runes are divination, as astutely noticed by Bryant. Some of them are also pressed to digitation, which is you a spell that with like such I disdain. I know. Um, <laughs> a lot of the other runes, specifically on the ground, are pressed to digitation, which explains why it's very nice and clean down here. Huh. Did they detect dirt and clean it? Yeah. And they used blood for that? Somebody Seems really counterintuitive. Yes. So they were so they were activated? Uh it seems like they're consistent. It seems to be your best bet, Gibby, with all the rolls you guys made as a collective, is that these are one, a notification system with the divination, if anyone comes by. Um, you don't sense any traps, and everything else is just to keep the place maintenance, so that way it's, you know clean and easy come easy go so these are oh, so damn. they're set to go off constantly so they're constantly active mm -hmm. is that what you're saying yeah G gibby looks at them and she says right. far as i can tell something up ahead might know we're coming and also apparently this is just a maintenance thing on the floor what i mean if it was a service tunnel then it would make sense as a alarm system for the people who used to work here doesn't mean anyone is still here though that basically, there's not much point being stealthy. They, if someone is looking in on us for with this security system or whatever, they they know we're here. Might as well cast loud noise then. Yeah. No use hiding it if they already know. Besides, it's not like we're the sneakiest crew around here. Yeah, it's about damn time. Hell, hell, hell will cast greeting. Hello, I am Kelzorin. Why are you, you yell that out loud? Yes. Yeah. Fucking oh, stupid. God. You said cast loud noise, so I did. No, I didn't say you... that in game. You meta motherfucker. <laughs> Kel would have done it anyway. Uh, the alarm already knows we're here. No point in being stealthy. Fuck. Why do I even bother to do voices? Oh. As you yell that out, you hear clink, like tiny feet hitting metal. On like a pipe. I'm gonna throw a grenade at it. You don't have grenades. <laughs> I just wrote it in my fucking spell book. Um, <laughs> pull out an acorn. Perception check. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Grenade. Careful, Bosco. You know how I am with grenades. Uh, I do. Hey, that's the hey. idea. Gibby, you move the. F are you wearing the goggles or you have a flashlight? Uh, both. I have both, but with the flashlight, wouldn't the goggles technically blind me if we were using flashlights? Yeah. Let's say you use the goggles. You kind of move your head up. And you look up and you see perched on like a pipe that's kind of coming out of the ceiling and around like a like a fluid pipe is a crow that looks down at you and looks down at Kel and its its head is kind of cocked and you see it look down and it goes ah huh any magic from that crow yes conjuration hmm. guys that crow up there is conjuration magic it will wave. Uh. The Give crow flies down and lands on your head, Kel. Oh. <gasps> ah! I am afraid. What's a crow doing in a place like this? Gibby's gonna take a shot in the dark here. Um, do you understand us? The crow jumps over to your head. It's very gentle when it lands and kind of like leans its beak down and goes, Ah! Oh, hello. Hi. Um... We're, uh, where are my notes? No, 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 notes, 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 notes. I have this, I have this written down. Um, we're looking for Frank's auto shop. Do you know where that is? The crow leaps off of your head and lands on the ground, kind of in front of all of you, and then like hops three times further into the tunnel, looks back and goes, ah! It, is it safe that way? Ah! It hops three more times. Well, do we go? Would that, would that be an insider and animal handling to kind of gauge 
if that's a yes or a no. Insight. All right. Could I also? Yeah, absolutely. It's a 14. 14. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Simple beast, slow stats. The, you sense no malicious intent from the crow. It seems to genuinely want to lead you somewhere. <gasps> it is friend. Oh, ah! Definitely something. Okay. Thank you. Let us follow feathery friend. It flies up onto your shoulder, seeing that you have a willingness to move forward and lands on your shoulder, Cal. And kind of cleans its beak and kind of fluff, fluffs up and kind of shakes its feathers comfortably. Cal will start striding forward. Okay. As you guys stride forward, the tunnel takes on a different smell, a pleasant smell, sort of like sage. Um, or like a really nice Italian kitchen, which is kind of a weird thing, but like a lot of herbs kind Does of right? begins to fill your nose. Does oregano mm -hmm. have like supernatural special properties? It does if you're Italian. Oh. <laughs> Wait, Ed, you're a mage? <laughs> As you guys proceed forward, you turn a corner and you begin to see some ambient light. Um, and as you enter the space, there are these growing clusters of mushrooms that are kind of emanating the soft glow. And resting in the middle of this space is a sort of old timey, um, like trolley, like an old sort of pre bus trolley, uh, which looks to have been repurposed as a home. Um, there's currently a curtain over the front door and the top of the roof seems to have like kind of like a little bit of a plume of smoke coming out, but it kind of just dissipates as it hits those prestidigitation runes, which are everywhere in the space. Huh. The crow takes off from your shoulder, Kel, and lands next to the front door on like this little post that looks like it was made for the crow, and it kind of lands and kind of flaps its wings a couple times and goes, Notably on the outside, there are a lot of like old wagon wheels adorned to the outside of this place. If you ever go by like an old like um, like flea market style house or like location and they have like stuff nailed to the like, you know, old saws and, and stuff like that. It's like that, but with wheels like car wheels and trolley wheels, wagon wheels, all manner of things like the steering wheels on uh, like ships and stuff like that. Seems to be a theme. Gibby will look to the crow. Um, is someone in there? Ah! You hear a voice come from the curtain. Well, don't be shy, come in. Oh shit, it's the ghost of Ric Flair. Why would that be what <laughs> Ric Flair sounds like? Because Sting let us right to him. Uh, Gibby will look to the others and shrug and Go on in. I'm just shaking my head. You put your hand and you pull up the curtain. The inside is filled with all manner of old style lanterns, like oil lanterns hanging in various different positions, bits and baubles, candles on top of skulls and old little old timey radios, knickknacks and jars filled with various certain things. There's one jar that has a couple of stick bugs in it. And as you enter inside, you see in the middle a table and coming around the corner holding a tiny little box is a haggard old woman um good evening ma'am sorry good to evening trade. oh no i was expecting you oh um okay so does because that mean you know why you're here The why does not matter. Oh. But you are here for a reason. Eat. Even if it is not upon your current quest. Come in, come in, don't be shy. I don't eat people. Um, Gibby will poke her head out. Go, come on, guys. Seems okay. Go, yeah, we'll come in. Guess we're going in. You guys enter into the space. And notably, as you enter, Gibby, when you entered, you're like, oh, there's barely enough space for two people. But as your companions enter, you almost feel the room shift and get larger to accommodate for every single person that comes in. It's bigger on the inside. 
the more people enter, the larger it shifts to accommodate them. <laughs> Hello, I am Kelsorin. Your favorite friend is nice. Ah. Um, Morgana is a rather friendly soul, yes. Oh, that is such a good name. Fucking Thanks. Dragon Age! Also, King Arthur Bosco. <laughs> yeah. You have a Dragon Age's cooler. Um, Lauren Gibby and, um... This oh, is I know our... who you are. Lauren Gibby, Kel Zorin, Michael Bryant, and Dalcom Brass Boot. Um, all right. So, um, your bird led us here, though. Um, you, you said you knew, well, I mean, obviously. Um, do, do you know where Frank's auto shop is? I do. But you have a better idea of where that is compared to me. We hope we do. Just more importantly, is your fortune. Uh, mine or all of ours? All of yours. Oh, uh, this is about to lead back into tarot, isn't it? Uh, I I'm for it. We're all going to Ravenloft, guys. I do like fortune. Yeah, we'll sit down cross-legged, his tail wrapped around his waist. Yeah, There's chairs. There's, like, chairs around this very nice table. Yeah, doesn't and want to break a chair. As the old woman kind of takes off her hood, you see a green, green-skinned humanoid, long kind of, like, surprisingly nice hair, kind of curled black hair that falls down the shoulders. Notably, she has, like, a pierced, like, nose, and it runs back. There's a chain that runs to her long, pointed ear. Her eyes are kind of where the white should be white. They're black, and her eyes in the middle are this piercing yellow. Uh, forgive my rudeness, madam, but I'm afraid we have not asked your name yet. <laughs> mm, I see... I am known as the Lady of Fortune, or Miss Fortune, depending on how the readings go. Many come for my services from above and beyond. Well, um, any help we could get would be appreciated. Knowing what lies ahead, we'll be able to arm you for the future. It is nice to meet you right away. Well, you watch as she opens up that box, she places it on the table and opens up and pulls out a deck. Is it a deck of many things? Oh, no, because I want this campaign to continue, <laughs> Arkha. <laughs> I'm afraid for my rather diminutive friend. And she kind of turns and smiles her dude, Dalcom. Your life is a peaceful one. And barring massive misfortune, the nature of this prediction might not affect you. Uh, great. Uh, well. But for you three, I would like for you to take a card each, one at a time. Let us start first with you. You seem eager. And she leans and looks towards you, Kel, and nods. Kel smiles and nods. I'm very <laughs> interested in yes. Kel will gingerly reach out and pull a card. All right. As you grab the card and place it, you see two intertwined figures. And at the bottom of the card, it says, The Lovers. Ah. Uh, this card represents relationships and choices. It means that something related to a relationship that you or others have may be challenged, or perhaps even sacrificed or gained. Whatever choice made, it should not be made lightly. Mm. 
Such a choice is seldom more. How about you, Nex? And she looks towards you, Gibby. Um, okay. She'll reach out and take a card. Okay. As you take the card and you go to flip it, your blood runs cold for a second as you flip the card and you see what it is. A depiction of a massive tower with individuals falling from it. And as you place it down, the air gets grim. That card is a dangerous card. It can mean crisis and destruction. It means... Careful, that's fragile. Sorry. It is associated with sudden danger or unexpected change. Is there any, uh, anything I should do? Let us see what the solution for this problem is, young man. And she turns towards you, Brian. <sighs> I fucking hate this shit. He'll go in and reach and pull out a fucking card and put it down. The last card is Justice. Hmm. Whatever decision must be made in opposition of the tower, it will be the fairest decision. It cannot be dissuaded. It must ring true. And it must do what is fair and just. And so my predictions be. And you watch as she kind of moves her hand and all through the cards restack to the deck and she places the deck back into the box. Mm. Great, there's con artists all over the fucking place. Are we done here? Uh, Gibby will nod and, um, thank you, ma'am. Um, is is there any payment we can offer you, or...? Not at all. For what I have done here is why I exist. You are not the first to stumble upon me, and you certainly will not be the last. I feel as though I have a service to the likes of you. Something in your future could affect the fate of not just yourselves, but the very nature of this city. Okay, we're leaving. Well, yes, we should go, but thank you. Thank you very much for your time, ma'am, and for the readings. Certainly. Take care. And as you guys kind of look towards the door and then look back, she's just gone. She just vanishes. Brian's walking out the door. She was really cool. She's full of shit, Cal. Please don't fall for that bullshit. Tarot is BS. Is Tarot really any stranger than some of the stuff we've come across? It's a bunch of con artists that ask a bunch of vague questions and then can read your expressions and make educated guesses until you fill in the blanks. We're fucking leaving. Oh, yeah, that we should do. Hmm. Is Morgana still out there when we go? Yep. As you walk out and she sees Kel. Ah! You kill pet her? Yeah, you scratch her. And she like does like the, the bird fluff up, you know, and they all fluff up and she leans her head down like pet my neck. It will do so. Thank you again, okay. Morgana. Ah! I'll take one of my burger rations and I'll, I'll sort of reach in and I'll pull out a piece of kale and I'll hand it to Morgana. Morgana takes it and, like, almost takes your fingers with it and then swallows. <laughs> now enjoy that kale, Morgana. Now go ah! back to Miss Fortune. You little legend. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You guys head back out the way you came, the various different runes just kind of staring at you, and eventually you make your way back to the 
fork in the road. Seeing that that location was a dead end, you now have the middle and the right. The middle is still more left than the right is. Can I roll survival again? You've already made your check for the sec- section, unfortunately not. Uh. I don't know why I grew an accent talking to that friggin' crow. <laughs> I lean towards staying to a wall myself, since the left didn't work. Maybe the right? Yeah, Jordan. We can't get any more lost than we already are, already are, so... Knock on wood, never say never. Please. Well, I guess it sort of, uh... narrows our options a little bit. Yep. If the right does not work, we come back and try the middle. If the middle does not work, I'm getting my Luigi board back. Right? I don't give a fuck, Gibby. Just tell me where the fuck we're going. We're going right. Good. You guys, you guys are going right. Okay. Marching right. Say marching order. I'm assuming. Yup. Okay. Don't worry, Michael. I'm certain this is the right decision. Shut up, Rex. <sighs> hey, man. Ease up, will ya? Just gonna ignore him. You know they're all hurting just as bad as you are. something to consider all right let's get moving all right you guys continue walking for about 30 minutes down the right tunnel this tunnel and i I know people are going to meme on this seems more dank than the previous tunnels monty why because it's <laughs> accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine there's a song playing through each of our heads and for Kel, it's tip through, through the tulips. <laughs> Doll comes sort of, sort of like takes out the stogie that he had lit while everybody was getting their fortunes read and just sort of puts it out on his brass boot and tucks it away. And don't want to create any fireballs down here. The smell is like maybe old copper that's been sitting in like water for too long and has kind of dissolved over time. Mm. Yeah, very, very, like, metal meets water smell. The temperature also has gotten a bit cooler. Not uncomfortably cold, but in a way that's like, you know, after a rainfall kind of chills you a little bit. Any magic detection ping- pinging? Um, after about 10 minutes, this is beyond 10 minutes. How long does Tech Magic last? An hour, I think. No, I think that's... No, I keep getting minutes. that mixed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. it is 10 I, minutes. I think it, yeah, it's been, it's been 10 minutes. Yeah, it would have dropped by this point, unfortunately. You can always recast it while yeah, we walk. Yeah, do it again. I'll go ahead and Fuck recast it while we walk. Hopefully it doesn't... Hopefully I'm going to trust you guys and hope that nothing bad happens in 10 minutes that I could have used it for. I mean, if it does, we have weapons. Blame you. Please do. <laughs> okay. Gibby, you kind of stop for a moment and take some time and cast it. <sighs> and you detect three pings behind you of illusion magic. Are they moving? They are. You look behind you and you see three tiny forms currently kind of skulking on pipes in the ceiling in various places around. They seem to be staring at you. The forms you can see, they are small humanoid-like creatures with wings and a tail that runs out to almost a scorpion tip. Does Does anybody speak infernal? Uh, I just wrote it on my character sheet. Yeah, what are they saying? <laughs> I I don't. Okay. I mean, I have a way that we could. Nope. Save them. You had them. Not even at the big could. bad guy yet. Save them. Okay. You already wasted level three on a fucking motorcycle. Okay. That was worth my all of, Yeah. All of you. 
all of you hear as this sort of strange kind of noise happens behind you as they exchange words, now noticing the gaze Gibby hitting them. Guys, we got company. Oh, shit. Well, this is gonna be a fun time! Are they, like, are they, like, being threatening? Are they just sitting there watching? They're kind of watching and just waiting just to see what you guys are Can we ignore them and just keep walking? Like a bug game. I mean, they followed us this far. I don't think I want them to keep following us. They could be reporting the stuff above ground. That is also true. I mean, unless we're going to kill them, let's just not even bother. You said you were getting illusion magic? Yeah. Uh, even real? That's a good question. So, if we keep... If we, like, move, like, five feet, do they kind of follow? All three of them follow, keeping pace. I don't like this. Doesn't the illusion magic cover things like invisibility? I mean, Gibby's the only one that can see them, yes. No, everyone can see them, right? Only you can see them, because they're all invisible. Oh, okay. Yeah, you ah. usually detect magic. That's, that's yeah. why. Uh, okay. That's what the Kellen illusion. Heard. The illusion is the fact that they're invisible. They've cloaked themselves, and only you can see them. No one else can see them. That's uh, right. what I figured. Gibby's gonna. They notice me looking. Uh, Gibby's gonna take another gamble. She will call up to them. Hello. You watch as one of them kind of like you can hear wings. The rest of you, <laughs> as one kind of lands, not close enough, but close nearby. Um, and kind of squawks out. Hello. Um, uh, hello. How come you guys are following us? Oh, interesting folk don't come down here very often, not taking these time offs. You must have gotten yourself lost. Um, no, not lost. Um, but trying to find Frank's auto shop. Don't know it. Uh, um, oh, so where does this tunnel lead exactly? Do you know? Oh, you know, to surface side, probably where you're going. Insight? Absolutely. Thank you. I was like, somebody, please. Yeah. <laughs> 19. Well, we can, yeah, we can yeah, all hear I, you got, you're the inside guy. But can they hear Thank him you. too? Ooh, 23. Yes. You see, okay, they you can't hear him. Out loud. Yeah, you can hear him. Twenty-three. Oh. Uh, Ooh, Kel, you just get it. Let's and Dalcom. Lying little shit. Uh-huh. Uh, how about you try again, but tell us the truth this time. Mm. The short one's a bit mouthy, isn't he? Huh. We don't know where this tunnel goes. We simply live here. We simply wait here, biding our time until rude idiots come stumbling in. And you know what happens when they do? Do you put them on a list? No. This. And you hear something drop in front of you, Bryant. And I need you. I guess it's going to have advantage. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna flip a coin here and see which one it'll attack. Ooh, no, it's gonna go for Dalcom, actually. Wait, what? Uh -huh. Yep. Wait, but you said me. Would it be possible, Monty, in that same moment for Kel to cast something? Uh, no, because this is a surprise round now, unfortunately. And in fact, I need all of you guys to roll initiative as well. Oh, Ooh. boy. Uh, here we go. Four, of course. Thirteen. And oh, here I one. go. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move you to a map. Oh, Whoa! shit. Uh, hey, it's Theros drawing. Hey, As, yeah. As dropping down from the hey, ceiling comes a human-sized devil covered in barbs. 
from head to toe. This thing is spiky beyond all hell. And as it opens its mouth, its teeth are these serrated points. And it's gonna swipe at you, Dalkin, with advantage with the surprise rounds. Oh, shit. Oh, rolls the same number twice. Uh, 21 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. That is going to be nine points of piercing damage as it swipes out with these massive claws against your chest. Ugh. It's going to take a second swipe at you with its claws. Is it revealed to me? Is it not with advantage oh, yeah. this time? All right. So that is going to be a 19 to hit. Just hits. Okay. Uh, significantly less. That's going to be a four piercing damage. On you. <clears throat> and you watch as this thing goes down on all fours and like whips its entire body around and goes for a tail attack against you. Jesus Christ, three? Yeah, what the fuck? And that is going to be a uh, 18 to hit you. That is my AC. Okay, so that matches, unfortunately. Boy, you're, mm -hmm. you can't win, you buddy. It doesn't matter what you play. Oh, come on, dude. Better oh, me than you. That's Five not true. piercing damage as the tail swings around like a Euromastic and bashes you in the stomach, Dalcom. <sighs> and immediately... This thing, come on. Yeah, it's gonna stay where it is and is going to end its turn. And you don't hear anything, but you hear the imps behind it go, yes, master. And we're gonna go into turn order now. So let's grab turn order here. Roll for these guys. Oh God, you <laughs> guys. And we have Yibi. We have Dalcom. Wait, where's Kel? We have Kel. Dalcom. And Bryant. Yay! You guys definitely lost the initiative race. What race? It's not a race. This is a slaughter. Sorry, give me one second here. I'm missing something. All right, off the bat, this creature is gonna take three more swings. Oh yeah, devils are bad. Okay, so we're level five. They're attacking three times and there's three of them. We're level six. Yeah. In fact, you should have your aura. I already do, I know. This thing is gonna do three attacks on you, Bryant. Good luck. Uh, first one is going to be a 24. It's too high. Okay, so that hits. That is going to be eight points of uh, piercing damage as it thrusts forward its hand and the nails just pierce through your armor. Okay. Second attack. Okay. Uh, not as good, 19. Sure, it hits. Okay, shit. Uh, that is going to be four points of piercing damage as it slashes across your chest. Okay. And again, it's gonna swing around with that tail. Okay. I'm using the rainbow dice, by the way. You asked good. for this. Good, good. The rest of us didn't. Uh, that is going to be a 17. That'll hit. Okay. Oh, shit. Wait, what? A 17 hits you? What? Sure does. Oh, that you're using the halberd, aren't you? That is going to be 10 points of piercing damage to you. I'm down. Wow. What? Oh, God. Seriously? No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, but that'd be funny. Don't do that, Ed. Jesus. By the way, Gibby, as you see this, because Tannis isn't here, this thing that is now attacking Bryant looks exactly like the petrified thing 
in Ziara's closet. I'm sorry? Yeah, remember that devil that was inside oh. of her closet, that statue? This thing looks Great. exactly like it. The imps fly over and immediately descend upon you, Kel, cackling madly. I assume they're not invisible anymore? Yes, this, as this thing bears down on you, it drops its invisibility. I know what I'm gonna say on my turn. <laughs> uh, rolled a natural 19, so that's gonna be a 24 to hit. That hurts. Jesus. I need to make a constitution saving throw for me, Kel. Yep. That is a seven. You take seven piercing damage. And an additional. Oh God, I keep rolling so many sixes. An additional 13 poison damage as the stinger just pierces through your chest and pumps poison into your body. The other imp breaking its invisibility flies over and lands on top of your head and attempts to do the same thing to you, Gibby. Great. That is going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, wait a minute. You have mage armor I... active. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm trying to remember. Is that right? If you have mage armor, it should be... Yeah. Dex. N no? Wait. I thought mage armor was a flat 16. Uh, your dexterity is plus two, so you have... That's... You're thinking of bark skin. Bark skin has wow. the flat. Mage armor is 13 plus your dex mod, I believe. Uh, yeah. What did they do to mage armor, so, 5e? It's it's 15. I'm ba I barely made it. Yeah, no, unfortunately, aggressor wins yeah, in that situation. You. So you are hit, unfortunately. Need you to make a constitution saving throw as well. Here we go. 20 soft. Nice. You're fine. You take no additional poison damage, but you take five points of piercing damage. It's a thing that kind of thrusts its stinger into you and holds on to your hair with its, like, mangled claws. You hear it kind of cackle and goes, This one has interesting smelling blood! The other imp is going to break its invisibility and can't make it there. And it is going to fly around to you, Kel, and is going to use a stinger attack on you, seeing you get affected by the poison badly. Uh, that is gonna miss. That is a 14 to hit you. That's a massive miss. Yeah, you bring up your kind of your gauntleted arm and the stinger just hits the metal. The the imp kind of flies backwards and goes, nah! That ends the enemy's turn. It is now Gibby's turn. Um if I use Misty Step, do I take this thing with me? No. It is simply on you as flavor. It's not actually grappled or a part of you. So if I try to move without it, I'm going to get an attack of opportunity, aren't I? If you physically try to move away without taking like without disengaging, yes. But if you misty step, they don't get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, fuck them. I don't want them. I, I need to get clear of these fuckers. Uh, 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 where's my little ruler? I'm going to go oh, whoop. over here. You <laughs> teleport out and land. That's your bonus action. All right, fuck these little shits. Scorching Ray, one for each of them. Okay. Here we go. Also, we can also we can see what these guys they see is around. Number one, ten, ten misses. You go and you fire, and it just splatters against the wall. Number two. Here we go. Oh 11. my God. Eleven misses. Unfortunately, the other one shoots wide. Number three, fifteen. You hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Um, this is the one in front of Kel, right? This one here? Yeah, I assume. Yeah. All right. Five. You thrust out your hand and you watch as the imp is engulfed and fired. Ah! <laughs> and he starts laughing, completely immune to fire. Unfortunately, these are devils. Yep. Yeah. And it kind of fire smiles right. and cackles at you. Great. 
Sorry, I didn't want to tell you, Sarah. Stop talking about stuff. Then... Do you want to take your move action? No, they probably have enough movement to get me. I think. Okay. Well... What's the range on that other thing? Let's see this. Alright. I get 30. I'm gonna bat yeah, that's not much move movement. Um yeah, I'll I'll take my movement and back back the frick over here. Okay, you back all the way over there and kinda of stop. Yeah. Alright. Chell, it is now your turn. Kel is going to try to snatch. Oh, this uh, Monty, one I'm sorry, Kel. Um, I didn't roll the one d hundred. Yes, uh, roll the d twenty. It's a d twenty. Yeah, sorry, one d twenty. Yeah, I didn't roll for that. I'm fine. You're fine. Kel is going to try to snatch this one out of the air. One with grappled wounds. Oh, okay. This will be level one. Does the 22 Ooh. hit? Absolutely yeah. hits. Then before Smoke the em. damage goes off, Kel will squeeze, look at the other imps, imps and say, the last tiny things to get in my way turn to dust. Damage right, goes you, off. You reach out and you grab the imp and like a paper bag popping, like it even makes the sound of like a, like a blown up paper bag, just bam, like popping. There's just gore on your hand as this imp is absolutely obliterated. Oh, look at that. Not dust. You're For next. your bonus action, you may make an intimidation check. Do a count. Probably won't be. Oh, 15. Not That's horrible. Not bad. Oh, unfortunately, they're a little more scared of their master than they are of you. And That's they kind of just ah, snarl towards you. All right, Kel, you, does that end your turn? Kel is going to shift his position around to here. Okay. Sort of interposing between them and Gibby. All right. Dalcom, it is now your turn. All right. Dalcom sort of pats his chest, sees the blood in his fist, and he says, okay. And he looks to Bryant. Hey, Meathead, go help your team. I'll take care of Ugly here. And he's gonna, oh, I can't control my token. Oh, sorry, yeah, new token, I apologize. New token, who dis? New, new token, who dis? There you uh, go, what would control it, him now. What would it take to summon my chariot? It's a free action, I'm allowing that because, you know, it's fun. All right, I'll just, I'll just reach into my pocket and I'll pull out a, a set of keys and you'll all hear a <laughs> That's awesome. Trish, it's tearing, go time. Tearing past you, Gibby, and running over the body, the remains of the imp, rears around and kind of does like an initial D style slide next to you, Dalcom, as Trish appears and you are able to mount her. I believe you take no additional penalties to mounting your mount. So, right. yeah. No one takes, Has it been uh, longer than an hour since the tongue spell? Yes, it's been like, several hours. I'm sorry. It only. <laughs> It only takes five feet of movement to get on there. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to pull my Warhammer from its sheath at my hip, and I'm going to take a swing uh, at this big guy. And I'm playing All right. Life, I believe. You are, yes. You get a plus two. Uh, first one's going to be a two-hander. Okay. Oh, probably not good. 13? 13, 13 does not plus hit. Two, plus two. Oh, plus two. Plus two. Just hits with 15. Excellent. All right. Uh, uh, just takes a sledgehammer to the temple. Eight bludgeoning damage. All right. As you swing around on the back of Trish, bringing down the sledgehammer, you bash into this thing. It seems somewhat resistant to the blow, though. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, wait a minute. That was... Oh, uh, plus two because of my dueling fighting style. Oh, okay. Sweet. Good to know. Uh... And 
then I'm going to just sort of rev Trish's engine. All right, you venomous poetry reading mold spot. I'm Dalcom Brassboot. And you're not going to touch any of those fuckers over there because you're too busy dealing with me. And I'm going to use my unwavering mark on him. Okay. As one of my cavalier fighter abilities. Uh, because I hit him with an attack, he is marked. Uh, while it is within five feet of me, uh, it has disadvantage to attack any creature that isn't me. Okay. Uh, if it does attack any creature that isn't me, I can attack him again as a bonus action on my turn. Okay. Uh, yes. If somebody attacks him that isn't you, does a spell end? Nope. Good. And then I'll reel back and I'll hit him again with Warhammer, one-handed this time. Trish goes into a wheelie as you downswing, bringing down not only your weight, but Trish's weight down on the swing. Go ahead and roll the hit. Uh, that'll probably work. 17. Absolutely, yes. Nine plus two is 11 bludgeoning damage. You come down and swing down on this thing's head and it kind of staggers a little bit and, and you hear a voice enter your mind. We'll see about that. <laughs> and he'll sort of, uh, he'll, no, I'm gonna wait on that actually. Um, do I have a light weapon? Is this a light weapon? You are two-handed, so... That is correct. No, you were right. Uh, yeah. I'll end my turn, then. All right. That brings us now to... Bryant, it is now your turn. I'm gonna hit this motherfucker in the face. All right. Its back is currently turned to you at the moment. I would like to show off the versatility of the 5e fighter and swing my halberd. It's hey. consulting... Mm, All right, here we go. Uh, 13. 13? With the flanking makes it a 15, which just hits. Ooh, I'll take it. This, fl this flank is saving your bacon. Uh, so that is five. And, uh, doesn't he have to make a save? Cause, uh, he has to make a constitution saving throw. DC 11. Uh, 23, so he succeeds. He'll pass. Yeah, he's and a then bit of a, I'm all... bit of a okay. bit of a chonky boy. Five points of damage. As you slash into with the halberd, the creature ah, turns around. Oh, we're around not done. He's also like, going to get hit with a thunderous smite. Okay. Oh. -ho. Uh, for four damage, and I need a strength saving throw from him. All right. What's the DC? DC is fifteen. Uh, ooh. Strength saving throw. Eleven. That is a failure. He is pushed ten feet away from me and is prone. Okay. Unfortunately, there is something in the way. So it's going to move it. He cannot go through enemies, unfortunately, but he is prone. Okay, then I'm going to hit him again with advantage. You will do so, yes. All right. You get three attacks. Oh, no, Thunder Smite is action. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, advantage? 15. 17. That hits. All right, nine another DC of... save and nine damage. Nine points of damage. <gasps> oh, no. Yes, Monty, go ahead. You watch as you slash into this thing, its body begins to solidify in a very similar manner to your companion, Tannis. How about you suck on that motherfucker? I don't know, don't you want us to succeed, Turn. Monty? I see how it is. All right. Leads Are you us really to gonna have two turn. boss monsters turned to stone back to back? Uh, you hear, yeah, you guys don't hear anything from this barbed devil, but one of the imps near you, Brian, goes, yes, master, and immediately barrels down on you. Okay. Uh, oh, terrible. Yeah, that's definitely not going to hit. That's a seven. Completely misses that's you. As this imp, miss. like, flies down, you kind of just backhand it away, and it goes off flying into the wall. The other imp is going to attack you, Kel, with a stinger. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a soft 20 to hit. That hits. Okay. 
Okay, I need to make a constitution saving throw for me. Yep, that is an 11. You just succeed. Ooh. You take four points of piercing damage as the imp stings you, but you manage to grab the imp and pull it out before it injects its poison into you. The barb devil is gonna use half of its movement to get up. It's no longer prone. And it's gonna turn towards you, Dalcom, and take three swings at you. Come on, come on, ugly. Uh, 10 completely misses with the first no. claw attack. He like goes to swing and Trish just like brings up, like kind of ducks backwards and barely misses and catches. A second ha. swing. Ooh, that's definitely gonna hit. That's a 25. Yep, yeah, that'll hit. That's a claw attack. Nine points of slashing damage to you. Ow. Third attack, it swings with its tail. Uh, that is going to be a uh, 13 to hit, which I believe misses. Nope. As this thing swings its tail, you hear a horrible, like, metal scraping noise as you look down and see Trish's paint has just been sheared off on one side. Huh! Trish! And Trish! Trish, vroom, like, kind of growls angrily at that. You're gonna pay for that, you festering, dirt-ridden plague sore! Alrighty, that ends the devil's turn. Gibby, it is now your turn. You kind of, like, put your hand to your neck where you've got that wound and kind of just, like, wipe the blood off, but it is now your turn. Oh, I have to do one thing here real fast for the barb devil. Okay, it's fine. Hmm, how's that barb devil looking? He seems to be resisting the petrification. But in terms of health, he looks like he's a lot he's got a lot of fight in him still. Oh what the hell? Bryant! Uh, he, he's busy. What's up? Even can you at least RP with me, dude? I got you. <laughs> what? Kick its ass. Haste on Bryant. You oh, cast shit. haste on Bryant. All right, Bryant. As the Barb Devil is going to swing at Dalcom, you watch as it swings suddenly slow down, and the beating of the imp's wings slows as well. So you now have a plus two bonus to your AC, you have advantage on dexterity saving throws, and you gain an additional action on each of your turns. And just for running up, trouble, Monty. quick spell, two sorcery points, chaos bolt, the one, ne the imp next to, uh, to Bryant. Uh, unfortunately, you already casted a spell that has a slot, so chaos bolt is a slot spell, so you can only cast a cantrip with the quicken spell, unfortunately. Yeah, why not? I can't do Firebolt. Fine! Vicious Mockery, why the fuck not? On the imp attacking Kel? No, the one attacking Bryant. Okay. I guess it doesn't really matter. No, it Please definitely matters. Head explode! Ugh, that didn't do much. <laughs> that should be, uh, you, you need to roll another d4 for that. Oh, fun. Uh. Yeah. One d4. Oh, so did not break Oh, yeah, no. that helps. <laughs> Yeah, that helps, wow. Joe and I. It's more than one. <laughs> At least it gets this advantage if it works out. It's true. That's the main goal. He takes My two points goal. of psychic damage, and he has disadvantage yeah. as he fails his wisdom saving throw. The imp's head, like, kind of pulses, and it <laughs> kind of gets back aloft on its wings. Um, actually, before I end, I just want to move. Let's move. Let's go. Oh, let's go over not like here. Here. Let's go here. Okay. Eh, eh, eh. Go ahead. I need to take like a like literally like two minutes just to feed my cat real fast because we're a little off time today. So yep. Kel, you're up next. Dalcom, you're up you're to follow. So figure out what you're doing on your turns and I will be literally less than five minutes. I need to feed the boy. Hi guys, no, welcome I... to the Monty P break. I already know I'm exactly not using what I'm doing. I'm feeding my cat. Don't welcome worry. Welcome to the Monty P break. I fully I fully plan on showing off the versatility of the 5e fighter. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> I'm glad you're holding up the tradition. <laughs> I appreciate that. We've both shown off the versatility of the 5e fighter today. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah, man. 
Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Alright, I'm back. Stop being goose. Why not? I'll show you the versatility of the 5v5. What did denial. you do? Punch the can open and just dump <laughs> it in the thing and go? What? No, I just, literally, the shelf right outside my door has cat food on it. I grabbed my little scoop, grabbed a scoop of cat food, put it in his bowl, and came right back. It's very uh, fast. I liked my image better. Mm, sorry. <laughs> it was fun. I like uh, to imagine I just, like, punch the food out of the can with my fists. Zen with like Pope Pope by the Marco, what are you doing casting these spells? Everyone knows you're a 5v fighter. Shoot, you're right. My bad. I'll fix it on the next turn. I got you. All right, Kel, it is now your turn. What are you doing? Make use of my haste, Brian, or I will never give it to you again. You're never going to give it to me again anyway. Kel is yeah. going to circle around this particular imp until he's back to back with Bryant. Oh, shit. All the while saying, you are getting in my way. My friend is waiting on me. And he will cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. Ooh, good spell. So, uh, DC 14 spell drop. save. All right, wisdom? I believe so, yes. Yes, it is wisdom. Uh, the Barb Devil got a 23. It succeeds, it will take half damage. Ah. Sorry, I'm flipping between two stat blocks here, I apologize. Uh, one of the imps got a natural 20. Woo! It succeeds. And the other imp got a 6. It failed miserably. Yeah. So, 12. a miserable damage roll. Six for you. And then 12 for this guy. Ooh, he's looking pretty rough now. What form does your spirit guardians take? If you remember from when we were in the sewage treatment plant, they're snow angels. That's right. <laughs> Little fluttering snow angels. You watch as the little fluttering snow angels like kind of bite down in a similar fashion on the imps, and the imps kind of try and like grab and wrench them from their bodies, but they are incorporeal and fail to do so. The imps are being torn up. The barb devil doesn't seem to care all that much. Also, their speed is halved for what little it matters. Uh, okay, good to know. And uh, when they start their turn in my area, which is all three of them, they have to roll again. Because it's right. the first time on a turn, which is mine, and when they start their turn there. God, I love words. No. Alrighty, that brings us around to, assuming that's the end of your turn, Kel. I'm pretty sure I can't do anything else, so yes. Clerics All are right. lacking in bonus action. Dalcom, it is now your turn. Alright. I'm gonna slide my sledgehammer uh, towards the end, so my grip is going to be at the absolute end of it. I'm going to swing down with full force right on the top of its head. Two-handed Warhammer swing. Natural oh, one. Oh. <laughs> yep. That sounds right. Yeah. It's good to be back. Yep. Okay, I'm going to break in rolled... the new character, right? Roll 20? Yeah. I also I also rolled a natural one, so you just miss. You swing and just miss and hit the ground. All right. Well, then I'll, I'll yank it back into my hand and I'll, I'll grab it near the head and I'll sort of like, I'll sort of like shove it towards its face, shove the hammer end towards its face like Triple H uh, and go for it again. 16 to hit. That hits. Uh, that'll be four. four bludgeoning damage plus two for a total of six. Okay, very nice. Uh... And as a bonus action, uh, he's just gonna roll his shoulders and he's gonna flex his muscles and you're gonna hear like the sound of muscles sort of going rigid as his active blood flow begins to cease and I will uh, activate second wind. Okay. Go ahead and roll the healing. So 1d10 plus my fighter level. Mm-hmm. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the versatility of the 5e fighter will Good. be on full display. <laughs> Plus your constitution Eight. modifier. Plus my con modifier? I don't think that's true. No, I, don't think, I think it's just a D10 Is it just the dice roll? I thought you D10 think it is. Level. It, oh, I'm Plus my of, fighter level. I'm thinking of short rests. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Me no have brain. It's square. It's okay. Again, Monty, this is why we play fighters. It's fine. <laughs> Wait. 
played a fighter twice, man. They're very versatile. Yeah. They are. I, and, um, I agree. I don't know why. It's, I'm they're also, on the same page. Uh, they're also really good at dying consistently. No, they're not. I've never and died rolling, in a 5 And rolling natural uh -oh. ones on, on... I've never... Yep. Oh, uh -huh. it's your mm -hmm. story about you. Okay. Miss Stein, man. Bye, Stein. You, you, you never had a chance. His name is literally Stone and Giant, and he turned into a fucking statue. Monty, I it, do you want to talk about this. I have a couch that you can lay on, and we can just get this all out. I'm of upset. I end my I turn. Clearly, we're gonna have a therapy session. I can see. <laughs> all right, that ends Dalcom's turn. Brian, it is now your turn. The world is slow, and you are fast. Dude, I'm on speed. speed. I'm gonna swing my halberd. All right. Let's fucking go. That's seventeen. Oh. That hits. That's 11 damage plus a con save, please. Uh, he doesn't have to repeat. He has to repeat the con save on his turn because he's currently oh, so under the effect. Oh, so once I activate yeah. it, it becomes like the... Oh, okay. He has uh, to keep resisting it, and if he gonna, fails... He's... Yeah. Got it. He's still going to have to deal with uh, with this, though. Yeah. Uh, Divine Smite. Oh! Suck it. Suck it. Nine. You suck on that. Damn. You could suck on that one. Wait, is that five plus nine? That's oh that my it, god. correct? Because it's a higher cast. Yeah, it is. I casted level two. Oh my god! So that's yep. fourteen points oh, of damage. So that was the first swing. Are you ready for the second one of the first turn? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, 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 normal roll. That's uh, nine to hit. So that's gonna miss. Nine to hit plus two. Unfortunately, misses. You swing the first time, stabbing this thing through the side of the ribs. You reach around and you bring down your blade, and as it does, there's this concussive blast of almost like divine and like bluish purple flame that just explodes off of the halberd. You swing around a second time, and the barbed devil, almost like a bit of a gauntlet, brings up a couple of the spikes and just deflects the fast attack. You are like Dalcom and and Kel. It's like phew, phew, phew. it's like Dragon Ball Z fighting. It's so fast you can barely see the movements going on, and you just see explosions going off. Are you ready for the uh, round two? Uh, when you take the additional attack action, you only get an additional attack. Yeah, just one. You get just Pardon. one. Yeah. Oh, so the haste oh. only gives me one attack. Yeah. Yeah, one additional attack. Got it. So I'm gonna do the additional attack then, because I did okay. the two that are normally mine. So then this will be the third one. That's right. Yeah, this will okay. be the third one. Okay, Let's here go. we go. I thought it gave me the attack action, so I got a full. Yeah, speed. no, it says only one. It would be really busted if you could do that. Yeah. yeah, that'd be yeah. Cool. All right, here we go. Uh, normal roll. It's a 15, nice. so 17. Hey. 17 hits, five yep. slashing damage, not and I'm bad. Gonna, and I'm, I'm going to smite him again. Okay. Here it's we go. Free action, I believe. I don't think it takes it, a bonus uh, action to do that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there you oh go. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh Bubba boom. That's the same damage. And sure 14 is again. Fucking hell. Another swing and an explosion of this almost divine and arcane and familiar sort of effect as you swing twice and this barbed devil. <laughs> and you can see now his fingertips are starting to become dust a little bit and like some of the nails are actually breaking off of his body. You can see he's Come on, you son of a zip. bitch. Talk your shit to me now. That'll be tough. All right, that ends your turn, um, Bryant. Monty. Yep. Is this thing, does it happen to be a fiend type enemy? Because it would it take is. extra damage from Divine Smite. Does it, I don't, I don't think oh. that's true. Does it count, does it I, count as undead? No, it, Divine Smite says undead or a fiend. It's an extra 1d8 if it's undead or Oh, fiend. then I should have got, yep. Roll 2d8s then. Yeah, yep. roll 2d8, because this thing yep. is a fiend, if go. that's what the ability says. 15! Oh! oh my god. Almost max damage. Let's go. Oh my god. I played a paladin once, so I know this bullshit. I, th I thought it was only undead. I didn't I, realize it was fiend. I played boss, but we never fought fiends, so I never yeah. Showing I didn't off know the about burst that. Ability of the 5e e fighter. <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. That's god. so much damage. This it thing is. is still standing. Um, I'm going to roll its wisdom saving throw for the spirit guardians because it's now the devil's mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. Now we roll uh, the damage. That is going to be a, a 19. It passes, so it will take three radiant damage. Jesus Christ, it also has to roll a, a lot of dice. For the halberd. Yeah, it does. At the end of its turn, it does. Wings. Yep. Uh, it is going to take three more swings at Delcom because you're, you've taunted it and it does not like you. Ha <laughs> yeah, come on! 
first claw attack is going to be a 17 to hit you, Dalkum. Nope. No dice. Misses. Second hit. Uh, misses entirely. That's a 10. Yeah. Third swing with the tail. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit the tail. Yeah, that'll just barely hit. Okay. That is going to be... Eight points of piercing damage to you as the tail swings down and slices at your shoulder. Well, there goes my second wind healing. <laughs> Constitution saving throw. Unfortunately, it rolled four. It's gonna be 23, unfortunately, on the saving throw. So it resists turning to stone. The imps also need to make wisdom saving throws against that radiant damage. Yep. I'll reroll uh, the damage for it. Yeah. No, you, we're going to use the same one because it's an AoE attack. Uh, so, yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, first Imp gets a 17. What's the saving throw? It's only a 14, so it passes. It takes three. Okay. A -yoy. It, it is still a -yoy. standing. The other Imp, uh, 10 fails. So it takes Ooh. seven. And on top of the 12 it took before. Like piranhas on a raw chicken. The spirit guardians tear away and destroy the uh, imp. Yes, it left the one that's got yeah. disadvantage. Nice. And the imp that has disadvantage is going to attempt to attack you, Kel. Uh, and is going to miss miserably with an eight. Okie dokie. It would have hit if I got the first roll, which was a very high roll. So good job on the vicious mockery there, Sarah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The imp kind of staggering tries to attack you, but completely misses, and that ends the devil's turn. I like to imagine it the spirit guardians are just getting in its line of vision, <laughs> fluttering around it like bats. Gibby, it is now your turn. Hmm. How haggard is that little imp looking? Bad. All right, I don't really want to waste a big spell on him then. So let's try Vicious Mockery on him again. Okay. And one before. One more for Jenny in the wind. There you go. Yeah. Seven. Fail. That's five. That's fuck five. you, you little yep. shit. You point at your finger and say, fuck you, you little shit. And the imp looks at you and you watch as his head just pops, like yeah! explodes like a grapefruit. Yeah. And it drops Somewhere to the ground there. dead. Uh, nope. just Somewhere out there, a gray Can tiefling is grinning. Just double check, Monty, can I do ranged attacks from where I am on the main guy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, I just want to see real quick though. What's this, what's the... The way I, I mean... have it, which is not the ruling, but the way I have it is that if you are able to fire through, you know, people, the enemies also can. I just want to see... Where's my ruler? <laughs> ruler! <laughs> Let me see this. Okay, 40. Then You run up to the road. You run up to the road kill, which was once an imp, and slide up. Let me just double check. That's what I wanted. Because I just want to make sure I have. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I just realized the camera needs to be adjusted. Is that your turn, Gibby? Uh, hmm. You know what? Hmm. Not, uh, yeah, actually, no, that's probably, I probably should. Uh, Monty? Mm hmm. Can I, uh, am I allowed to use quick spell with Chaos Bolt on this, or does it have to yes. be cantripped again? Yes, absolutely. No, because you used a cantrip as your action, so your bonus cool. action can be a, a level right. spell. It's two sorcery points. Chaos Bolt, and let's pray it's not frickin' fire! Uh, let's see if it even hits. <laughs> eh, ten. Unfortunately, it does not hit. As you fling out your hand towards it, the Barb Devil just ducks down and it splashes against the wall. Uh, what a waste of sorcery points. All Go right. ahead and roll a d20. Oh, that's right. Uh, fine. You're fine? All right, that ends Gibby's turn. Woo. Unless you would so like to move. Yeah, that was such a waste. 
Sorry. Fortunately. It happens. It's yeah, not a waste. Happens. You could have hit. All right. Kel, it is now your turn. Kel is going to turn his head to the barb devil. Slowly <laughs> saunter around Bryant. Oh, it's the death triangle. Would I be flanking if I, I get a no. dispositioning? You need to be in a murder sandwich. You need to have an opposite. And I'll just stop you, right here. Death triangle. Kel is going oh, to reach God. out at third level and cast inflict wounds. Okay. Bye. Let's go. Oh no. Twelve sadly does not hit. Twelve does not hit. As you reach out, the barbed devil bat like kind of swats your hand away and like kind of strikes you like literally like backhand bitch slaps your snout away and you kind of like stagger back into the wall and the spell shoots off in the wall and unfortunately does not register. Uh, I hate roll 20 sometimes. That's my turn. <laughs> That's all right. It's going to be poetic. <laughs> to my <laughs> world, child. You hear a voice enter your mind, Arkolf. My kind walked these lands far before your scaled one. Can Kel respond? Yeah, absolutely. It seems to be in your head. Ooh. And yet, how funny you will die before we do. Woo! Yes, sir! All right. Dalcom, it is now your turn. Kel is not in the mood for nonsense. Tannis is waiting. He's just looking at, at, at Kel, sort of slowly walking over to this pitched combat. He's like, ah, what are you doing? Uh, whatever. Uh, second verse, same as the first. Come on, Gonna go for be kind. Oh, finish it, Connor. Warhammer, Warhammer two-handed. Hey, finish yeah, it, Connor. Yeah. Hey, guess what? It's another natural one. No, oh. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <sighs> are you kidding me, roll 20? Seriously, it gave us a good week last week just to lull us into a false sense of security. Wow. Oh, boy. Connor, I'm so sorry. This is bullshit. I, I think someone I think someone a, a while back called me the the Will Wheaton of digital tabletops. That's uh, pretty accurate, dude. That, I'm not that gonna is lie. Starting to become truth, and I don't, I don't like. But that. it's only on Saturdays. You're not this bad as Panic. You go to swing the warhammer. The barb devil shifts forward slightly, and as you aim for the shoulder, the head of the hammer does not hit, but your hands hit the barb devil hide. And you watch the ah. spikes pierce through the back of your hand and through your fingers. You take four points of piercing damage as your attack misses. Ah. The barb devil just kind of looks up at you and smiles with his really long teeth. <laughs> ah. Bitch smack it. Don't count your chickens, ugly. Ah. Finished it. 21. Yes, uh, that is eight plus two for ten bludgeoning damage. All right. Let's bring it down to that. You bring down and kind of pull the. You actually like pull the uh, the hammer inwards, and as you do, Trish revs up, and immediately the tires hit the face of this thing and kind of and kind of like scratch off part of its face before it pushes away from the two of you. That ends your turn, Delcom. Uh, yes. All right, Brian, it is now your turn. The barb devil looks really bad. Good. Halbrid to the face. I'm going to smite him if I hit him. Hit him in the crotch, Uncle Scrooge. 15. Just hits. Let's go! So that's seven damage. Seven damage, and then you want to smite as well? Correct. For another three plus... Two, so five. It's gonna be twelve. How do you want to kill the barb devil? Um, uh, can the stone overtake him? Yeah, I have a good Great. idea here. You go for it. Pull back the halberd, like you know, like you would throw a spear, and you just drive it like Legend of Zelda Wind Waker style, right through the barb devil's head. You hear this resounding crack noise, and as you hold it in place, you watch as spreading from the tip of the halberd running down the head and then to the shoulders and the face, the entire creature just turns to stone. Its shoulders lax and stiffen and it falls to its knees and 
stiffens completely. And for good measure, can I then shatter the head? You do. You kind of twist the halberd sideways, and the head pops, and the rest of the statue just crumbles to the ground. Fucking come at me now, you fuck! I want to imagine that since Brian still has haste on him when he says that, it's just really squeaky and squeaky. Like a chipmunk. Sounds like Banjo Kazooie. God. Oh, everybody all right? Yeah. We will be fine. Oh, okay. With that, Monty. How are you, Dalcom? Can I start testing prayer of healing? Absolutely. Okay, this will only be level it. two. That is 13 plus... Come on. That's 17 healing. Ooh. Nice. Is that for everybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, and thankfully I didn't take too much, though that puts me back to full. Now, uh, would I damage. gain additional healing from Blessed Healer, Monty, since that's technically a spell on others? Uh, what's the ability? Can you click it? Yep. Mm -hmm. When you cast on spells, you cast on others, heal you as well. Oh, you can just oh, other than you might be the catch, since I did it to myself as well. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, because you heal yourself, you won't get that as well. But for things like, um, you know, healing word and cure wounds, that'll you can apply that as well. You guys, take a moment just to rest and just gather your bearings. Uh, okay, Baby, Dalcom. What did that overgrown lizard do to you? And then he's just sort of like, he takes out a rag and just like wipes some gunk off of Trish. As you go to like clean some of the scratches, you just chip off more of the paint. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I'm gonna have to buff that out when we get back. Yeah, oh, oh. shit. Kel will I sadly, know, sadly walk over to Gibby. You okay, Gibby. Kel? Yeah? Will you help me clean this? It's nasty. He'll hold out his bloody hand <laughs> covered yeah, in Yeah, it's door. like, it's covered. And it's like, it's not just blood, it's like chunks of meat. Yeah, first digitation. Thank you. As you guys take a moment to reprieve and take a, what I'm assuming is a short rest. Sure. We're gonna go on break. Do we get any benefits <sighs> from a short rest? Yeah, you get your hit points back, but if you have healing stuff, you can also take that. It, it's more I of believe. like a- You have to roll your hit die while you're taking a short rest. If you <laughs> want to, you don't have to. I'm going to. get my to. second win back. Oh, oh, Max! Ooh. Nice! I mean, I, I don't need any any hit points. Kel got me, but is there anything else I can get? Um, for uh, read your abilities. Yeah. See if the, I don't think so. For but read your abilities anyway. So. It's primarily warlocks and wizards. Yeah. yeah, warlocks and wizards get their spells back on short rests. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see what sort of business. Burned through a few spells, but I think I'm okay. <laughs> This is a short rest, one more for good, right, Monty? It's a short rest, yeah. Got it. So no spells come back. Ugh, I'm back. I figured at the you'd want to secure a location if you want to take a long rest. No, I'm not. I don't want to take a long rest. I'm good. Let's keep going. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm Ooh. running low on spell slots at this point. I mean, yeah, me too. Uh, for everybody who guessed Cavalier Fighter, you were right on the money. <sighs> also, what? get it. That was my guess. Yeah, Cleveland oh, Cavalier, I, I get you. I, I named I named the bike Trish, who is a character from Devil May Cry. Yes. And in Devil May Cry 5, Trish's body was used to form the boss that is called Cavalier. Or Cavalier That's Angela. You're very, you're very clever, Connor. You're I lied, I know, thank you. You're just so clever. <laughs> If anyone thinks Kel think was undutably mean in that fight, this has precedence. The last time devils. a friend was in danger, Kel was also mean in a fight. Oh. Come to think of it, last time it was Tannis, too. Mm hmm. Back at the York Bar. Well, hi, guys. Welcome into the halftime show. What's up?
blood pressure towards roll 20. I mean, I'm feeling great. That third level inflict wounds would have been so nice. Mm-hmm. Fix your fucking algorithm, roll 20. I like how the to hit was the last thing that showed up because I was right. like, oh, that, that's huge damage. Oh, it's a 12. Why isn't an upcast spell also getting a higher chance to hit? It seems like because a missed that, opportunity. Well, that'd be, that'd be broken. Everything must have a weakness, including clerics. Including you. Yeah, mine's called roll 20. I like that Monty used the rainbow dice and we wiped the floor with that motherfucker. I feel good about that. I was using a mixture of my rainbow dice, which is my luckiest set, and then my frosted uh, dice, which is my unluckiest set. No. Oh. How'd that work out for you? Kind of like the Medusa, turned eh. to stone. Eh. Yeah. The Monty, stop saves. opening. Stop the opening. And... Go! Leave! <laughs> He's opening the door. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wireless headphones. Jesus. That's why I can't tell any secrets on the stream, because she can hear everything. Ah, it's adorable, and yet creepy at the same time. What's up, chat? Uh, big piece, thank you for the 100 bits. Appreciate that. Gotta say, I think it should be up to Tannis on if he tells Nefene that he couldn't come home because he got stoned on the job. Uh, Cosmosis with 100 bits. Don't forget what we learned from Gibby's book. Tarot has special significance in this world. I'm pretty sure Gibby hasn't told any of us that, so that reading has no meaning to us yeah, right I, now. Yeah, exactly. That was just Gibby and her book. We haven't been told. Bosco, tell us a secret. All right, guys, don't tell Monty, but she's a big, stinky poo poo face. What the fuck did you just say about me? Ah! I have you know I graduated at the top of my class in the Navy SEALs. I'm over. I'm off. I'm sorry. In the. Okay. In the... <laughs> That was good job, Monty. <laughs> Scared her own cat. I'm sorry. You're good. You're a good boy. Okay. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Sorry. She was like, I'm doing a bo- Oh, no. No. It was so good. Top of her class in the Navy SEALs. Uh, 100 bits from Luke the Lucas. Bosco DM'd Mass Effect Session when? Dude, I was in like a two-year-long Mass Effect game, and it was freaking great. I loved it. I would love to do that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see if there's enough demand for it. Uh, Durgan247 with 100 bits. I've heard bad luck can transfer between dice. Be careful, Monty. <laughs> don't open the door. Uh, in what way are you most anticipating Monty to beat you up, Bosco? Um, I'm looking really, really forward to her, uh, like, trying to shoulder check me, like, run me over, and then just falling down. I'm really excited to see it. Uh, Magic, thank you for the 100 bits. So, no cat bits, but my cat, Tigger, just came up to me, and I think he wants me to play with him. And he just stuck his head in a nearby box until he saw me looking at him. So I think he wants to play. Or he wants the box. Zen with 200 bits. Monty's going to greet Bosco with a flying elbow. She might break her arm. Like, we might have to spend some time in the ER. And she's going to learn real quick that America's hospitals are not very good. Sergeant Tucker, Canadians, they can be nice. But when war is mentioned... They go nuts, and apparently bears with the 50 bits. Thank you. Lucas with some bits. Luke the Lucas. I will start spending so many bits to raise demands. <laughs> we shall see what happens. I would I would love to run or be in some listen, more Mass Effect stuff. Listen, I love Mass I have, Effect. I'm I trying to talk about Mass Effect, Monty. What do you want? Listen, I have insurance that covers everything but death and dismemberment. I will absolutely risk what life. What happens when you lose your arm? It's dismemberment. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. And things in America do cost an arm and a leg. Exactly. You're going to be so out of luck. Can't believe the Monty's going to get her arm chopped off by Bosco's sharp arm hair. Yep. I am Italian, after all. That is, yeah. Uh... That's the joke. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, don't talk in your mouth, Sarah. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, you're not my fucking dad. Da, da, da. What? 
You're my fucking dad. It's true. Thank God. I don't think I'd want to play D&D with my daughter. That'd be weird. He might not be her father, but you played one on TV. Fuck, you're right. You did. I did. You're not my real dad. Nobody played him on TV. Monty Glue Navy Seal, excellent shell. Sorry, I might need a little bit of time because I'm eating some leftover food and it has to get eaten. No, you're good. Nice. Hey, right, Gaijin right. Goomba's in the chat. Hey. Be sure to check out twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba no H. Um, How many seconds like do you need? 10 minutes. Oh, 10 shit. minutes? Okay. I can stall for 10 minutes. You, you so, sure you don't Connor, want 20? Did you, maybe. Did you, <laughs> maybe. 21? I fucking. Oh my God. <laughs> Used it during the stream. How could you? That's illegal. Listen. So, crazy. Connor, did you see Rampage last night? I didn't see Rampage, no. Was, I was. Oh my was god, I changed my mind. Was, I it was need pretty good. No, so, so, the Andrade Pac match was actually really, really good. I'm surprised they gave it away on free TV. Ooh. I know they had to because of the whole plane situation, but it was really, really good. Also, I'm yeah. so excited for the uh, uh, Dark Side of the Ring fucking plane ride from hell episode. I am so ready for this oh season. Oh my god, that is going I am to be so, so ready. good. Like, J one of the clips, like, JR says, if I never had to talk about the fucking plane ride from hell anymore, I'd be fine with that. Like, it's infamous. It's, dark, side, dark Side of the Ring is really, really sad most of the time. That's I'm so glad that they're episode. finally going to get a funny episode. <laughs> well, the, it's pretty sad, but it's also funny. It's, it's sad in a funny way. Yes. And also funny in a sad way. Like how Brock Lesnar and Kurt Henning almost fucking almost bulldozed fucking, through the fucking yeah. door <laughs> at 20,000 feet. Uh, Luke the Lucas with 500 bits while also raising Demand Bosco. Who's your favorite Mass Effect character? It's Garrus. And anybody who doesn't say Garrus is wrong. Garrus is like... Garrus is the best. Tally yeah, is he's... a close second. And Tally's good too, yeah. Followed by Rex. I mean, there's a reason Tally ends up with him spoiler if you don't chase i mean you can't chase if you're a guy unless if the game hates you like garris is not a type of character i'm like oh i'm you know i think you're i date you right but like yes, i date him i would absolutely yes, would. date garris he would seems like very nice He's smart. He's got a career. He's a vigilante. He's everything you would want. He's bald, technically. He's, he's kind of gray. And yep. kind of gray. He's got reach. He's, he's got, got flexibility. Flexibility. Monty does not have flexibility. <laughs> I, I want to say something to argue that, but I don't want to say it in front of so many people watching the show right now. Got it. <laughs> Whoa. Next question. All right. I think that says everything you need to right there. I, All did, right. I did martial arts. People were really impressed by how well I could bend my limbs. I'll just say that much, but. <laughs> Boy, I'm just, there's so much good I'm stuff here, guys. I'm just imagining you like doing the splits and Johnny caging somebody. Also, I can't imagine you at 75 pounds doing martial arts. I can. It was, it's it was, amazing. It was, it was great. I feel I really like you really would kick something thing. and go, well, that's my last kick. My sensei taught me how to like break a man's hand, which was really quite cool. That is. Monty, does this mean cool. you could like you could like you could like break me in half? No. Okay. How long ago did long you do before. martial arts, Monty? It was for a couple months. I think it was like for four months, but it was for self defense. Like I was learning self defense. So if it's someone interacts with me, I kind of can figure out what to do. But I'm not super great at it. So, I've been boxing for four months. Do you want to spar? I don't know if that would work. <laughs> oh, all right. You just have to hold the pads. If you miss, that would end the disaster. Would it? Also, I haven't missed the pad yet. You word yet. It's, it's true. The cover of God Hand. You're right, Zako. I won't go Butterbean on Monty. I I will not Bart gun her. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I got that reference. Ooh. What is Butterbean? What does that mean? Butterbean was a he boxer. He's an American boxer. Yeah. Mm. He was a big dude that could throw a haymaker. Oh, Wait, what? That's not a very intimidated name. Hmm? 
I said, wait, was? Oh, no, he's still around, I think. Oh, okay. Because he was, I think he was on that episode for uh, Dark Side of the Ring. When they were talking about the Brawl for All. Oh. Sorry, I, I wanted to make a tournament called the Brawl for Y'all, but it has nothing to do with, like, shoot fighting. Nothing changes except everybody's wearing a cowboy hat. Exactly. Ye, and I cannot emphasize this enough, ha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You think I Cowboy shit. Oh, you know what Mass Effect character I really like? Garrus. No, Morden, the scientist guy. Oh, oh the yeah. yeah. We just got them pache, fettuccine Alfredo. You know the shitty... So, I'm about to do spoilers for Mass Effect 3, so if you don't want to hear it, go ahead and mute your mics and skip ahead. But you should have played it by now. Kai Lang did not get enough screen time. That's my thoughts on Kai Lang. Uh, the problem is so they Morden, to do the Blizzard which, thing and do novels with Mass Effect, which is so, where he got his screen time. Andromeda should have taken place between one of the two ga like two different games, like between 1 and 2, 2 and 3. It should not have been off of the future after the relays were busted. Spoiler! Anyway, so... Remember how Morden, and this is going to make you hate this game even more. Remember how Morden in, in Mass Effect 3 says, I'm going to go up there. I have to because somebody else might get it wrong, right? So yep. he has to be the one to go up. Do you know what happens if you never meet Morden or if Morden dies in the second game and you never see him in the third game? Do you know what Someone happens? Else does it perfectly Someone perfectly. else does it for him. Mm -hmm. So it didn't have to be him. You fucking ruined it. You couldn't eat. Mm pisses me off think about it this way it had to be him someone else would have ruined it which they did mm, the moment is ruined if ruined it's not it. him it, it's so they cool. blew it up Fucking damn it those maniacs like i i think three gets a bit of a bad rap because of the ending but there are some writing choices in that game that drive me up the wall for example if you romance if you romance jack you get like four or five extra lines of dialogue. If you romanced <laughs> Assassin Boy, you get one line of dialogue before the whole sequence with him. One. Uh -huh. You get one extra line. You know what happens when you romance Jacob? Does anybody know? You make when the you list. Rom what? No, when you romance Jacob, you find him in the third game after having romanced him in the second game. He has forgotten about you and he's had a family. A different family. Fuck you, Jacob. Damn. Wow. That's oh, that is the, that is awful writing. All right. For a lot of reasons. <laughs> Are we good to keep going? We're going to end the, the Mass Effect podcast here and keep going. You said, to st <laughs> you said stall for time. Yeah, I'm done. I ate. And All I'm right, let's go. Done. I'm ready. Back to the Mass of Prince Division. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun, though. Uh, Mass Effect tabletop. People want me to Here's run one. I will run one if there's enough interest. I want to play one so badly. Also, I would, also... You also, our call of Final Fantasy one also speaks to me as well. But hey, anyway. Oh, you have a Final Fantasy one shot? Hmm? Our call, do you have a Final Fantasy D&D thing? I may or may not be building something in the background just in case. Yeah. <laughs> I am right. intimately familiar with the lore of that setting. Of course you are. You love that game. So cool like 13 it. hours and counting. You guys take a moment for some rest and respite. Also, Sarah's here, correct? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Making sure. What do you do? With a drunken sailor? Also, Where can Connor, we find you're, one? You're, you're breathing in your microphone. Mm, I know, I'm noises. doing effort noises, because I'm hurt bad. Can I double check the map with a survival check? Absolutely. Thank you. With guidance. Thank you. If those devils with are advantage. Go after. Yep, I know, because map. Yeah. Okay, 19. Oh, Plus two for... Four. Oh, uh, 22. Ooh. All right. As you look at the map and kind of flip through it, you notice that 
you had missed, unfortunately. It's like a whole like you know those things in like doctor's offices for kids that are like the little cubes on like the wire things or yeah. whatever. That's kind of what tracking this map is like, but like worse. As you kind of follow your as you follow your finger around, you realize that it leads, unfortunately, to a dead end. So, so the middle path simple. was right. Yeah. Damn, that was gonna be my guess too. Fuck. Well, I mean, to be fair, after talking to those little shits, I didn't think this was the right way anyway. Okay, guys, we need to go back to the middle. Uh, all right. Uh, actually, Monty, before we move, and because I don't want to do it in an actual fight, I'm going to do flexible casting real quick and convert one of my level three spell slots into sorcery points. Okay. To three sorcery shoo, points. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Because if we're fighting a chain devil, Scorching Ray is not going to do shit, so why save it? At some point, we may want to find a suitable, fortifiable location to rest for an extended period. Oh, man. Multi-day trek? Uh, it okay. Like it. Uh, casters. Well, all right. Let's go find something, then. Okay. You guys head back, walk an hour back to the middle chamber. And proceed down the middle one. What time is it now? As you look at your phones, you guys got here at about... What time did you guys arrive at the cut trail? I can't remember. I should know this. I'm the DM. I'm an idiot. Uh-oh. We set off early in the morning, went to meet yep. Dalcom. Yeah. I'd say we probably got here afternoon, late evening. I'd say it's probably, like, past midnight at this point. Like, it's maybe, like, oh, 1 a.m. shit. And we Brian's already been up for 24 hours. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are going to need to take a rest if we're not going to get exhaustion. Which we do not need against a chain devil. Mm. Proceeding. Alright, are we finding something down here in the sewers, or are we... It's not sewers. You know, the sewer train. It might we do not be. There's shit everywhere. It would not be wise to backtrack any further. Let's we'll see if we can find something further ahead. Uh, okay. I do not wish to impose on misfortune. Yeah. Well, I mean that this in misfortune, not misfortune. <laughs> yeah. Lady Fortune. Got... That is what I will call her. I think she'd like either one. But she is so nice. She's not misfortune. Well. Regardless of the status of strange fortune reading old crones, I think we're not going to really find a very defensible position down here. I uh, mean, Trish can go on ahead if we want. What's the scout be out? Probably be a damn sight quicker than going on foot. It might not be safe by yourself. Uh, I mean, you can see in the dark. Might be good to have you scout things out a little bit. I'll go a little bit ahead. Won't be out of eye shot. Okay, so you're going to extend how far ahead of the group with the marching order? I'll go... Hmm, I'll go like 45 feet ahead. Okay. For the rest of the group. All right, you guys proceed walking through the middle section. You walk for about 20, uh, 25 minutes or so, and you see up ahead that part of the wall has collapsed. And at first you're like, oh my god, we're trapped. But then you do notice that there is actually like a hole that you can climb through. Yeah, there's something up there. And I'll point and Trisha's headlight will go whoop, over to the hole. Yeah, you see it. It's got like, there's a slight bit of stone that leads up. It's nothing that requires a check, but like it is a bit of a, you know, extenuation. Uh, is my detect magic gone again? Uh, yes, it would be at this point. Uh, if it lasts 10 minutes, it's gone. Yeah, I'm gonna do If it lasts that. an hour, it wouldn't be. I'm gonna virtual cast that again. Keep that shit up. Okay. <clears throat> detect no magic. Okay. 
now, shall we? Might as well. Can we roll as you... investigation to see what's in, no. in the tunnel? You guys just go. One okay. problem, Delcom, is that Trish, you know, you try and drive Trish up and Trish can't make it, but you know that she's at your beck and call, so. Ah, uh, well, I'll call if I need you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right. You guys go through the hole and slide down um, and proceed your way forward. This part of the tunnel is not dank. Sorry. Um, it's actually Damn. has some crisp air to it. It's dunk. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> oh. Dalcom, go ahead for me and make a perception check. Alrighty. Ah, back to square one. <laughs> no, that's a five. Connor, Jesus Christ. It's just, uh, it's just Let's how just it's going to be. not roll stuff anymore. <laughs> wake me up when combat starts. I'm yeah, just going to wake me up when combat's over. The dwarf is asleep. Can any Boy. of the rest of us roll perception? Yeah, you guys can. Go ahead, Sarah. I mean, I got you... goggles, so. Sarah, how's your back doing? Uh, don't do that to me. It really bit us from the butt one time. Uh, you have guidance. Thank you. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, Today so is that. not that time. 1d4. Eh, 15. As Dalcom is like reacting to a rat that scampers past you guys, it's like, Damn. you know, Jeez. moving around, you notice, Gibby, a little light up ahead. What the heck is that? Some, anybody else see that? As Gibby points it out, you all see it. A little kind of bluish light. I'm going to walk Any, towards it. That, anything pinging my magic? From this distance? No, it seems very far away. I'm going right. to walk towards it. Let's right. proceed slowly, Bryant. Why is it blue? Who knows? As you, walk train. as you walk towards it, Bryant, you watch as it almost like almost like oh, I'm trying to think of what it would be like a dandelion fluff in the wind. It gently kind of moves in the air. Is it a fucking will-o'-wisp? And then you see another one. Well, it, it wouldn't be a will-o'-wisp because we see that. Yeah, you all saw the light. Pretty sure they can make themselves visible. So is it just a and bunch of them that are generating light? Are we getting close enough for me to get any pings? Yeah. You get a vague magical sense, and as these things get closer, yes, they are will o' wisps. There's about oh. five of them. I was right. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they can choose to be invisible. And they approach and kind of dance around you guys, almost like mm. excitable. So these ones seem okay with us. Can we insight them? Sure, incite the ghosts. Yeah, I was gonna say, good luck with that. Why not? Yeah. I can try. You are Don't more touch than welcome him. to. Brian, you can you roll insight with advantage. Uh he doesn't want to incite them though. Gel will insight, because he remembers the one that helped us with ghosts. Amelia. Fifteen. There you go. This is nineteen. Holy shit! I have Don't really high him. stats when roll twenty lets me. Yeah, you do have a plus six. I hear bad things are heralded by the Will of the Wisp. I heard they can even chew through tanks like they were nothing. He watches one of the Will of the Wisp, like, like a curious like hand running through your beard, just kind of goes and floats through your beard and then pops out the other side, like peeking like a curtain. And a couple of the other Will of the Wisp kind of move up and down as if like laughter. Uh, Kel, yeah. they seem extremely harmless um, and seem just quizzical, inquisitive when it comes to you. I do not think they mean us any harm. Besides, they're not all that bad. One helped us save a little girl once. Huh. Is there still light at the end of this tunnel? You yeah, see I some more know. lights. There seems to be quite a few of these things down here. I'd like to keep moving in the tunnel. Okay. Bryant, roll a perception check for me. Okay. Hey, Monty. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Good, 13. Good, good kill, just for comedic sake, just scoop up a big armful of them and hug them. As, as, you, go to, as you go to scoop them up, your hand just goes through them because they are unfortunately no. incorporeal. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, it's like the, his worst nightmare. The cutest you thing done that, that you can't touch. You should have done it with the palmels. You can pick, well, actually, no, those are also ghosts. Never mind, You're, no dreams for you. <laughs> no dreams for you. <laughs> Gibby, Gibby kind of curiously wants to hold out her hand and see if one will come on to it. Yeah, it like floats over and kind of hovers above your hand by an inch or so and just kind of like spins around gently. Why do I keep making friends I can't hug? There's so many of them. Yeah, there's, there's like Willow Wits, there's the think... other ones, there's Bryant. It's just, you have a bad habit of that. Uh, there must Bryant. be like 901. As, so your companions are, yes. as your companions are kind of playing around with the will-o'-wisps, down the tunnel you hear this ambient noise, like a person's voice. Do and you watch as all the will-o'-wisps kind of turn and begin to make their way back down the tunnel from where they came. Huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep walking because I assume my compatriots are going to follow me now. Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> not where else to go. Me. Kel follows dejectedly. All right. As you guys proceed forward, the tunnel, again, it's dark down here. Something about it becomes a little bit more, like, different in a way. I mean, it's not just the tunnel itself, but also the fact that there are hundreds of will-o'-wisps right now as you walk down the length of the tunnel, each lighting your path. And as you, like, walk past them, they kind of move out of your way, like, oh, excuse me, like, kind of politely make their way around you. And you see a form in the midst of them all, standing, a very lithe, not too tall, kind of form. And you can hear them doing that. Too too Just kind of over and over and over again. Notably, they, they have a staff kind of on one side, and it kind of gnarls forward like a hand. And hanging from it is like this metal thing with a... Um, I don't know what they're called, unfortunately. The thing that holds incense, they kind of swing around. Oh, a sensor. A sensor? Yeah, a sensor, yeah. I'm and gonna you... sure my, I'm going to make sure my halberd's in my hand. What okay. magic am I getting from that person? Strangely enough, you would think necromancy, but it's not. It okay. is divine magic, very similar to when Bryant used his smite spell. Oh, shit. Oh. To whom do we have the pleasure of meeting? Hello. I'm <laughs> Gelsorin. Hello, yeah, wave. Too excited. Yeah. As the face turns, you see a probably five foot eight humanoid. You're not sure. They're wearing like simple clothing um, and they're wearing like this sort of massive, like it was probably a blanket of some kind um, that is working as a cloak. What is extremely strange about them is that their entire head is wrapped with like black cloth. And the only thing you can see is a sunken in eye that is almost like a piercing blue. Okay. That's fucking creepy. Hello. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> You're one to talk. I feel like Kel has a good sense for people. Uh huh. I hope oh. so. Malik. <laughs> Hello. They appear to be male. Kel was aggressive with Malik, so yes, good sense for people. Mm -hmm. I must say, you're not the biggest will of the wisps I've ever seen. Well, we're alive, so not exactly will o' wisps. <laughs> well, you don't seem like the type of people to be forgotten. Especially not you. He turns and smiles towards you, Cal. You can see that he does smile. You can see the movement under the, the really tight face wraps. And he kind of turns and looks towards you, Cal. Hello, cousin. Um. Okay. Does Do you two know each other? He says cousin to Cal? Uh, cousin. to Bryant. Oh. Oh, oh, I thought he said it to Kel. I was like, I'm really So did I. I was about now. to say, humanoid calling Kel cousin. That don't work. I was like, that's a hell of a glamour. Mm. No, he turns towards you, Brian, and says, hello, cousin. Hello. 
Brian's not going to respond. That's fucking weird. Why are you following this? My sensor. <laughs> you should be really the one to be followed. That doesn't make very much sense, actually. The fuck are you talking about? We're one of the 16. You and I. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. He watches he raises up a hand to you. Shepherd Cruel. Unfortunate name, but I am anything but. And yourself? You can call me Bryant. Your last name, if you don't mind. Yeah, Bryant. Oh. Um, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen here, asshole. I got shit to do. I'm not about to spew my family history to you. Are you going to get in our way or not? No, no. Hardly not. Hmm. I wonder perhaps if that is your curse, then. Sudden aggression is a little unbecoming of one such as us. My curse is that I can even fucking see you. Gibby, is this the right hole or not? Sir, we're looking for Frank's auto shop. Is it this way? Hmm. Is that a surface building? Uh, yes. He kind of looks around at you. Don't be so tense. They're just will of the wisp. They're completely harmless. But I can't hug them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yes, like a bit them. of a problem, I'm sure. Oh, they're per perfectly harmless. It's not seem very. Tense. I also can't help but notice the giant gaping wounds, bleeding fingers, as well as um, short tempers. I take it you had a bad run-in with the locals. In a word. Hmm. Um, well, I'm not quite well versed in the surface, but when it comes to these tunnels, I know them rather well. Um, we could review your map, perhaps, and I could show you the best course of action. If your friend here, and he kind of turns towards you, Bryant, doesn't have want to rip my head off. What I want and what I'm going to do are two very separate things. Uh, he's, he's fine. That would be great, sir. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, he has all right to be upset with our lot in life. When so your curse isn't cosmetic, it can run deep. Gibby will approach with the map and show it to this guy. He kind of turns his head and goes, Ah, oh, they're repurposing these. I find them time to time. I should give you some to take back with you. I'm sure they would find them most useful. The people in Catrail are interesting individuals. Um, let's see. Okay. Did you talk to the old woman? Um, the Lady of Fortune. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we did. Hmm. Interesting old hag, isn't she? Um, I think... Uh, I'd have to compare my own maps, because there have been some collapses with new construction. You can thank the Baron for that one, and his oh, thugs. Boy. Come, come, follow me. Um, well, you don't need to follow the sensor, but hopefully follow me. Come on. Turns back and looks at everyone. He kind of stops and turns and goes, Come on now, I'm not like your friend. I don't bite. <sighs> Kel's not nervous. He's just trailing after the Will-O-Wisps, kind of grasping at them. Yeah, he's just trotting after him. Brian is going to go from the front to the back and wait for them to go, and then he'll go. Okay, I'll take the front then, I guess. <sighs> don't like looking at him. I like a lantern that's a furnace that burns in the soul. You've never met Lady Odelia, have you? I try to stay as far away from weird, undead shit as I physically can. That's what you and Brian have in common. <laughs> They're not undead. Well, they sort of... Well, yes, they are technically. They're just a little lost, is all. We all get a little lost time to time. Can't really blame us for it. Merc is very much true. This way, he leads you over. You guys walk a decent while with the will o kind of like chasing after you. They seem inquisitive. And eventually he leads you to not a cable car, but a like a cement 
it's weird. It's like the roof suddenly rises. It gets taller and it's almost like its own like little cement building set to the wall. Um, whatever glass is there has been shattered and fixed and cleared out. And there's curtains now hanging over it. And as he pulls open the door, this giant metal door, the inside is a very simple abode with like sort of a cot in the corner and a bunch of different things like, you know, cookware kind of sitting around. This appears to be the main rail control of this once probably well-maintained rail system underground. You live down here too, sir? Yes, of course. Someone has to help these little guys. Isn't it dangerous, though? Anywhere's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And for the likes of me, I'm not particularly liked on the surface. Your friend may have a bad lot in his curse, but my curse, unfortunately, lies in the cosmetic. He kind of taps his face. Oh. Not to uh, sound insensitive or anything, but it's not, like, contagious or anything, is it? He smacks his knee and actually leans over, and all the will o kind of bounce up and down. No, no, when you die, maybe, but that's a joke. <laughs> no, no, it's not contagious. Uh, right. Not not, not at all. Cool. Casmodius was very particular in who is afflicted by his um, disdain. I wouldn't know who that is, would I? Roll a history I... check. A history check? Is Casmodius made of stone? No. Damn it. Well, get maybe. to use it one of these days. <laughs> 14? You know that Casmodius is a lich that's uh, the lord of the lich ward. Bad customer. Ah. Right. Yeah, no, I tend to steer clear of all that nonsense in the lich ward. Mm. <sighs> well, let me see our map here. Uh, here you are. He takes it, and he goes over to some papers. He yeah, turns back, and he goes, I know we simply just met, but perhaps it is a semblance of um, familiarity, despite the aggressiveness of your friend. It has been a while since I've had such visitors, and especially visitors who carry a similar nature to mine own. If you wish to rest here, I would be remiss to turn you away. That would kind of looks at everyone. I wouldn't be opposed. Well, roll out the good cots then. Here, if you wish to compare these maps, he kind of hands the two maps to you, Gibby. I'm going to go grab some blankets. Cement isn't the most comfortable. Well, perhaps the dwarf. That's a joke. I know better, but, you know. So I have the two maps. What would I... Do I need to roll something on that? No. You just literally compare the two and write down some notes. Notably, there are some more collapses that's pointed out, and there's some that just have smaller tunnels to them. Some of them are, like, X'd out, which says infestation, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, Shepherd Cruel leaves you guys in this cement building, and some of the willow kind of hang out, but a lot of them tend to follow him pretty closely. There's a few idle ones that, like, kind of watch what you're doing, Gibby, with curiosity. And there are some that are kind of, like, checking out Brian, and there's a couple that are, like, playing with Kel because Kel, you know, is being friendly with them. You've got, like, three or four in your beard, Dalcom. They're obsessed. Ah. <laughs> I, think, I think they like you. Uh. So, now that I've done the map, is, is there any way to see from the map where we're going to end up? Can I tell that now? Yeah, it seems like there's a clear path to the north. How, if it's safe or not is up to debate, but it looks like there's a clear path up to the north beyond this tunnel. You'd have to go down a specific area. Because this is the main control, it's also a place where it seems like a lot of train cars like go off in different directions. But you know exactly which way to go from that point. And if not, maybe this person could help you. Okay, I think we got it. Now we got a clear shot. Are we bedding down for the night? I think we probably should, especially if we're cha tackling another devil. Mm, it might be best. I want to make sure I'm at full capacity for this thing. 
Well, all right then. Also, welcome. Yes. Have you ever thought about becoming a pirate? No. Oh, because with these will o wisps with you, you could call yourself Ghostbeard. You'd be really fierce and fearsome. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like my... I like the road. I don't really have a lot of, uh, sea legs. You could be a street pirate. Huh. Hmm. But it's a road, but a concrete river. Who taught you all this shit? Kill, we'll go back to playing with the wisps. Okay. Uh, good, good. All right. Your friend's a little weird. No, that's just Kel. Trust me, when you see the stuff we've seen, someone like Kel is really nice to have around. Well... I guess you're not the strangest thing I've ever seen. Hmm. He just looks down at his beard with all the will of the wisp in it. I'm gonna there's call like, you. There's a hmm? lot more now. It's just like it keeps every time you look down. There's just more of them. I'm just gonna look at the biggest one and point at him. I'm gonna call you Randall. <laughs> it like floats away and like kind of does like a little spin, like it's happy, and then comes back to the beard. I'm not gonna get any shut eye if these guys are blinking in my beard the entire time. Gibby. Yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Looks at her phone incredulously, meow, like. Meow, meow, meow. Wow. Meow, 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 meow. I, mean, I knew I had signal, but. Uh, hello? Uh, Gibby, it's. And I just summed up. And you, there's gotta be. Uh, there's a. There's five men down and. What's going on? It's okay. We got. Can you hear me? I freak I'm freaking. You're breaking up. I can't. Where's up? Slow down. Where's up? Beep. Beep. I'll try texting uh. him. And uh, wait, I'll try calling back. I'm sorry. Your number cannot be completed as dialed. Do you want me to contact your boyfriend? Ask him what is going on. I can talk Send to his head. Something's he didn't wrong. sound panicked. It sounded like he was trying to report something to you. Something's wrong. He said, I think he said five men are down, but they might have it handled. If you could, yeah, you check, will you, please? Yes. Kel, are you sending? This what? message is simple. Uh, hello, Darzib. It is Kel. This signal is horrible. You have 25 words to explain what is going on. Go. You guys have some downtime to talk to each other while Shepard Cruel is gone. And while I do this, if you guys want to talk. What about Above Brian? Game. What is Brian doing? He's been quiet. Uh, Brian was at the back of the tunnel. So right now he is leaning up against the wall with his halberd. He's just staring at the opposite wall. Brian, I know you don't want to wait, but we really should rest and get to full strength this thing. You think I don't want to sleep? I wonder. <laughs> right now, Tannis is probably the safest of us all. Why'd you have to say his name? She puts a hand to his shoulder. I'm sorry. I really should be better about saying stuff without thinking. You're pretty you guys acquire. You guys seem to like him a lot, if you don't mind me intruding on this. Yeah. This uh, Tannis <clears throat> guy. 
What's he like? He's a good dad. Yeah. The best. Yeah. I heard about that. He's got a little uh, daughter. Your scaly friend told me that. What's she like? Bright. Really cheeky. Loves Tannis a lot. He <laughs> loves her. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a lucky guy. You know, elves. Uh, they got those low birth rates. It's unfortunate. I don't know. Something about their genealogy or physiology just don't really reproduce all that well. He sounds like a good man. I'd be honored to help him get it back. Thank you. To Tannis, family is... Family is everything to him. Ha! <laughs> this guy's an elf? Don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, I'm just playing around. No. no. He sounds like a good guy. I hope you get to meet him. I hope I get to meet him, too. You are all a bunch of characters here in this new Prince Division. Say no. Did you know any of the old ones? Oh, no. Nah. I was just around when they were... You know, the whole thing was starting up, you know. Dwarves, we can get old. I'm not terribly old, but I've been around the block for a while. Kel. Yes. You get a response from Durza. Oh, shit, not counting. And there's a pause. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb motherfucker. Kel will say that out loud. <laughs> Just looks over. If he shoots him a look like the rest of the, day. the rest of the message continues. <laughs> a white dragon just busted into the stronghold parking garage and smashed your Medusa. He killed two copper rings and injured, and the message cuts out. What? Okay. <laughs> Kel? The message is, is to repeat. Ah, shit, not counting. A white dragon just busted into the stronghold parking garage and smashed your Medusa. He killed two copper rings and injured, and then the message ends because he ran out of words. Because he can't count. Well, uh, he can count, but not well. Gibby. Yeah? Teach your boyfriend basic math, please. Uh, I'll try. Kel is rubbing what his did temples. He say? What did he say? Uh, well, the Medusa problem is solved. No, in a weird way. So a white dragon kind of broke into the stronghold's parking garage and smashed her, killed two copper rings, and apparently injured more, but Durzip can't count. Give me so just the message staring. abruptly ended. Give me just staring at Kel with her mouth agape, like, huh? How did the white dragon even know she was there? Um, above game, what was the dragon oh. that was in her, her her garden? It was a white one. That was a white oh. dragon, but it could still be stone. It could be something else be. entirely. That doesn't make sense. And how, how would it know where you guys went? Well, like, no. everybody, make, everybody make intelligence checks for me. Okay. okay. I'll do this as well. Except for Dalcom. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, wasn't there. damn it. <laughs> Yay, Doc will just reach. Doc will just reach into his pouch and pull out a flask and. Uh, <laughs> dumb stat. Why? Why wasn't I a smart person and actually put intelligence into my shit? I could have been the one. General oh intelligence God. check. It's because it's just a base check. Then the the success is a bit lower. So. Ugh. Intelligence. Here we go. Eh. Eh, Seventeen. Okay. Seven. You're a bit distracted at the moment. Mm-hmm. Monty. Mm-hmm. 
Can I cast enhance ability on myself first? Sure. Yeah, no, Fox is cunning. You advantage on this. Uh, Kel knows he's dumb. You burped, Alcum. Yep. Mm -hmm. 18. Ooh. That's nice. Gibby? And Kel, as you're sitting there and ho humming you, both of you both have that light bulb moment as you, I can't remember who, who saw them, but when you were leaving, there was someone watching from the roofs. Oh, I think that was Gibby. Shit. We thought it was the bodyguard at first. It was. Oh, shit. Oh, so his human form was just a glamour. Wait, the guy that was with my brother was a white dragon? Oh, fudge. The oh. tower's got a white dragon? If he's working with him, he's probably angling to become the next ancient. So, wait, I was the only one. I thought someone else saw him on the roof. I think you I pointed you him out. Him. You pointed oh. him out. We all saw him. Did I? Yeah, I believe you saw him. Oh. Guys, do you remember that guy on the roof when we were leaving the Medusa's house? The tower's bodyguard, yes, yeah, Zugan. That didn't sound like a human name. Wait, the tower? Yeah, Prince yeah. Division Tower kinda goes hand in hand. You know about the tower? Everyone knows about the fucking tower. It's back? Yep. Yeah. He just, he just, like, slaps his forehead. And you guys are investigating the... It was behind our most recent case, or a proxy. Oh. Oh. Dalcom Brass Boots, what have you gotten yourself into? So, that was just a glamour, and they were a white dragon. Uh -huh. He's just tossing back his flask, just... Kel? Kel, how many more sending spells do you have? That was my last. Until I rest. <sighs> Damn it. Well... Gibby's gonna try... Get to... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. We should get on that, then. We are, believe us, but... Without Tannis, we're one man down, and we need him back for this. I hear ya. I'm not helping you with the tower. But I'll help you with your friend. We would not expect you to. There's no amount of money in the world that I think would be worth... fucking with that kind of shit. I don't blame you. Mm. Who do you want me to contact in the morning, Gibby? I just... I'm just worried if the t if that dragon knows where we went. I just... I want to know Tannis is okay. Tannis likely is. Darcy would have mentioned. But he only mentioned copper rings. You're right. Gibby's gonna just preemptively send a text to Durza asking, just double checking on that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully whenever she gets enough of a signal, it will send. Yeah, you get the little red bubble next to it saying could not, message could not be sent. As you guys are kind of like thinking about this, the door kind of <coughs> cracks open and you see Shepard Cruel kind of come with like all these different blankets of all varying different quality. Uh, one is just a rug. Uh, there are towels and just like old, old, like, um, you know, quilts that were probably uh, train cushions stitched together. Ugh. All right, here you go. Um, I wish it was a bit more cozy, but I'm not exactly running a five star motel down here. I apologize. Oh, it is quite all right. Thank you for your generosity and hospitality. Of course. It's nice Believe to have me. visitors. I've slept in worse. I, I will can... not elaborate. 
believe that. Dwarves do come down here every now and again. I mean, just my nature as a courier, not really a dwarf, but, you know, that's that's the route you're going here. Well, treasure hunters, smugglers, varying other things tend to wander through here. <laughs> you watch as they just turn to you, and you can just see by the eye kind of closing slightly, they just kind of give a smile. Well, if you have any concern about security, um, these little guys are cute, but also very defensive. So if anything cruel tries to make its way through, it should be fine. And when it comes to, and he kind of gives a little side glance to you, Brian, then looks back to the rest of you. If it comes to any malevolent spirits, um, that would be of my responsibility or your friends, depending on his qualities as a shepherd of his own, I suppose. We appreciate it. Of course. Mm. Can I have my map back? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you, thank you. I imagine you don't wish to have this conversation, Bryant, but it has been almost a lifetime since I've seen one of the 16, given my rather elusive nature. I'd be wondering of the circumstance of any other families you might have run into. Any whispers of a reconvergence? If that even means anything to you. Brian is going to get up off the wall and slowly turn. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blind. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. No, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't. Your last name isn't one of the 16, which means no doubt you've lost concentration of your line at some point. Do you know how Casmodius came to be? That history. A bunch of people turned him into a lich. Our ancestors turned him into a lich. And you would think that Casmodius and his grandeur would have rewarded us for such actions, but instead of his greed, cursed every single one of us in varying different ways. You watch as he reaches up to his face and begins to unwind the kind of coiled black fabric. And as he does, you see underneath a gaunt skeleton-like face. The teeth are sharp points, the eyes, these glowing like concave beacons of light that pierce through your soul. It's a horrible visage. Brian is going to look away. My family's curse was to have the face of our master permanently affixed to us for all eternity. So that those who look upon us see us as Casmodius and that no man would invite us to their tables. And to think one of my curses is the tame ones. Do you know why he did this to us? Why he gave us these abilities and also torments us so? No because he's afraid of us undoing what has been done. I can see the lady's touch on you, Lady Odelia, no doubt. For you to have met her in person is a chance that I could only dream of. The grass isn't always greener on the other side, Jack. But she is trying. She wishes to undo this, to make our lives better, to make it so they, and he watches, he extends a hand out to the -the will-o'-wisp, so that they no longer have to remain. That they can be where they need to be. So they can be free. Well, then I hope she can do it. She cannot do it without our help. For Casmodius is the opposite of her. Her powers to him mean nothing. 
becoming what is is becoming what he is now has made him immune to her abilities. But if we can come back, if we can find each other, then we can remove this curse on the world and there will no longer be ghosts to be afraid of. Listen, Shepard. You're not in my flock. Rex is, Gibby is, and my friend who's a fucking stone statue back at an Ord complex. That's my herd. You're picking the wrong time to make this pitch, pal. No offense. Then grant it to your next generation. It's all I ask. My line dies with me. There will always be a line. Then that's their problem. It is Chasmodius's bane, and problem indeed. He picks up the cloth and begins to rewrap the face. I hope, and this is the selfish part of me, that I can see people again. But for what it is now, and he kind of looks over, and some of the will kind of gather around him. The family I have, I am grateful for. They're overbearing and invasive, but what family isn't? Anyway, you should get some sleep. Your wounds are bad. I'll look through what I have and see if I can find something that might assist you going forward. It is the least I can do. Uh, all I ask, perhaps in exchange, is that you tell Lady Odelia that Shepherd Cruel is willing, if she was willing to send an envoy. I'll pass along your message. Thank you. Good night. And he steps away, and you can hear him kind of go into a storage closet and begin to move through things. Brian's going to wait about 30 seconds and then throw his weapon against the wall. Um. Well. That is a sensitive subject for Michael. Uh huh. Please do not pry. Yeah, I don't. He just, he just, he, he has one hand on a flask and the other is just raised and, and uh, uh, that's none of my business, pose. We should get some sleep. I know when to hold them and I know when to fold them. Uh, but you're right. Yeah. Uh, sleep. Uh, we should all get some sleep. Right. You guys just all sleeping and no one's going to keep a watch? Uh, Brian is going to stay up. He can't sleep. There's no way. So if, okay. I have to take, if I have to take exhaustion for that, that's fine. But in this That also state, means he, you doesn't get your health or your abilities back. Or my spell well. back. I understand, but he can't. There's no way after everything that just happened. Okay. So he'll at least stay watch for the whole time. Okay. You guys... Rest and slumber. Shepherd Cruel walks over to you, Brian, in the middle of the night and hands you a potion of healing. It's dusty, but it is something. He hands it off to you and goes, oh, sorry, it's all I have. He's going to hand it back. Then you should nice. hold on to it. It sounds like you're going somewhere far more dangerous than what I have to deal with down here. I'll be fine. If you're going to do something with Lady O, you're going to need that eventually. <laughs> kind of looks at, lifts it up and looks at it with his, you know, one eye. Bit of a diminutive inheritance, if you ask me. But it definitely means more to you than it will to me. You watch as he, Chipper Krull, kind of like, kind of crouches down and goes, Are you okay? No. What is wrong? 
That's a very loaded question. How long do you have? Well, he kind of looks over. And as you look over, you see Delcom is like sleeping and snoring. And every time like he inhales, like all of the willow is gather on his stomach. And then every time he exhales, all the willows like a trampoline just like go up like fireflies. <laughs> and then when he inhales, they all get back into position. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Shepard Cruel looks back and goes, Well, seeing as how you seem quite restless, I assume all night. Green. I don't know. Ask me a question if you're that curious. Mm -hmm. What's brought you down here? A friend is unwell, I think I heard on my way back in. Yeah, he uh, he got turned to stone by a Medusa. So we are currently trying to track down a cure. Hmm. That is a difficult thing to find. Extremely. That's why we have to kill a chain devil to get it. Uh, on the surface. Yeah, whatever this repair shop is. I do not envy you, but any less devils is a blessing on these lands. Hmm. You mentioned, he looks over towards your companions, that they're your flock, for lack of better terms. I assume by that you mean your friends. I was making fun of your name and trying to be creative. I'm not very good at it. Fair enough. Most people tend to get caught up on the cruel thing. That's you should see... Easy. Oh, yeah. You should see when people come wandering in here, I tell them my name, they turn around screaming. I think we do that. Yeah, that's why I covered it. And yet here I am, same problem, different reason. Have you thought about an alias? Uh, it's my name. It's the only thing I really have. That and my friends. Well, then good I, on you. I, again, I can sense a great deal of discomfort when it comes to probably the nature of what we are, and to that I can understand. Granted, my exposure at a young age was, well, he kind of just gestures at his face. Unavoidable, to say the least. That being said, why do you not have any spirit traveling with you? Probably because if they tried to, I'd chase them off. And why do you do that? Because I don't like them. And why don't you like them? Because they're a constant reminder of the thing that drives me crazy. And what would that be? That I can see and hear them sometimes. And why is that a bad thing? Have you ever tried to explain to somebody what you see when they can't see it? Have you ever tried to describe colors to someone who's blind? I have sometimes, but to individuals that are willing to listen. Perhaps the average person may look upon this and see a mess, but I think the other average would see a wonder. It changes person to person. It's not all one way. People are fickle and, and different. Yeah, well, when your teacher tells you to stop making a ruckus and you're just trying to explain that there's someone trying to talk to you and there's no one fucking there. Sorry. His gaze turns to your companions. And what do they think? They're smart enough to leave it alone. But what do they think? Rex thinks it's cool. He bought a Luigi board for it. He's the dragonborn. He likes it, and clearly you value him more than this teacher you mentioned. And yeah. clearly he cares about you and is your friend. And to him it does not matter. In fact, it elevates you as you are. Yeah, and maybe if he had been in that class, and maybe if we had grown up together, I wouldn't be so fucked up. I didn't get that opportunity. Believe me, I'd love for this just to be something I could put in the rearview mirror. It's not that simple.
You don't think I've tried? And what is it that you've tried? To talk, to help, to do things, and it never works. It never does. Hmm. He thinks about it for a while. All of this seems so strange. So you've tried and you failed, and you feel like a failure. I couldn't even can, stop my friend from getting turned to stone. Can I ask you something? Sure, we've got all the time in the world. He looks towards the Will of the Wisps, and again, all of them are still on Dalcom going up and down. A couple are like chasing a mouse that's kind of running and scampering across the, the concrete floor. Like almost like kids would be chasing a chicken. How much does helping them matter to you? Dude, I can't even help myself. Answer the question. How much does helping them matter to you? I don't know. I don't think about it. So, not that much, then. I don't even know what they are. They just, they're here. Shepard kind of gets down on one knee and leans down to you as an equal. You have no idea how much it matters to them. To even try means more than anything. Failure or success. You know, there's a little girl on the surface that could use that advice. With the gift? Oh, yeah. She can straight up hear him and talk to him and see him. Even just being seen. You see him actually stand up and you can feel an edge to his voice, a painful edge. You have no idea how just being seen and make you feel something. To not feel so lost. It means the world. Take the bandages off. He takes them off and you see his face again, the gnarled teeth, the sunken and glowing eyes. This time Brian's going to try to fight the urge to turn away and look him in his sunken eyes. Roll an insight check with advantage. Oh, shit. Sixteen? In the depths of his gaze, you feel a familiar loneliness and pain. But beyond it, a pride, a sense of duty and honor that you have never seen in a person you've ever met before. And he stares at you like an equal, like a reflection. I'd say take a picture, but you might break your camera. <laughs> I'm 
I've taken selfies. It hasn't broken yet. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, you don't have to say such things to make me feel better. I'm not. Trust me, I'm not in the business of making people feel better. But you're trying. I guess. You say I'm one sure. thing, but do another. You do that a lot, it seems. Yeah, well, don't pretend. Just... Don't pretend people can't notice. I don't like how smart you are. Well, when you're all alone, you got a lot of time to think. Yeah, tell me about it. Plus, I uh, he kind of looks side to side. I do enjoy books. I'm more of a video game person. What are those? Oh boy, that we don't have time for. Well, we have all night. Oh, jeez. Don't make me break down the intricacies and the versatility of video games, please. Uh, have you? What if you could take a book and play it? Like a, a board game. Right. But you're watching it on TV like a show, but you're controlling the story. I've heard of TVs. They're like radios that have pictures that change. Yeah, yeah, that's, yep. It's so good if you ever get up there. It's a book on a TV. Wouldn't that be a movie? It would, but it's a playable movie. That's the difference. How do you, you speak into the, the TV and it moves? Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're starting to get to that kind of technology, but normally you have some kind of controller, like a remote control in your hand, and you um, move stuff around, and... Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Huh. Well, maybe one day, when the curse is lifted, I will play a video game. <laughs> Give it a shot. I think you'll like it. I think I will. You know, we do board game nights here, if you can believe it. Who you play with? Well, the Willowists love to play, especially the younger, newer ones. Uh, color me impressed. I didn't know they had hands. Well, they point out where they want to move the things, and I, see. I roll for them, and it, it's it works. Maybe my luck with dice will be better than my luck with people. <laughs> I'll go grab one. You watch these scampers oh, off and comes back with like, it's the worst. It's like Candyland. It's like a really bad board game too. Oh God. Like you'd, find, <laughs> you'd, you'd like find in like a camper that like they just bought for like 20 bucks. And throughout the night, unless you want to sleep, you play Candyland with this weird. I'm going to play Candyland. Fuck man. it. Yeah. And you guys rest for the night. The uncertainty of the surface and the rattling of chains foreboding. And that's where we're going to end the session for tonight. Oh, boy. All righty. Goodbye, Austin. Bye, Bye Austin. Austin. Bye, Austin. Man, I can't believe we've got to wait a week to play again. I know, right? Fuck. Yeah, but you get to play with Dalcom a bit more. Is next, to next one fight, you're done. Is next week Gateway? I believe so. No, because they're still... It's Because next week would have been a Gateway. Are we doing Gateway next, next week? Should be. No, it, it, it's all. Wait, I thought it was all. Prince oh, of it is. All okay. September. Yeah. Because he was missing two weekends in September. Because Lanny. Yeah, I, I, thought, right? I, think I we thought we three. were, but. Lanny's gone. Lanny's gone this weekend. This so coming. Sh no. The, or the one the, we just played. So the one we, so we did this. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he is currently gone, so I think. Okay. This would have been Should Prince be Division right. Day regardless. Next week okay. would have been Gateway. So next week is Gateway. Okay. Next week is Gateway unless... Well. Oh, no! Two weeks, then. No! Episode 39. Fuck. That was a good combat. I really liked... Do devils or... I, I'm so sorry, Sarah, about the, the Scorching Ray. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I, I was like, no, oh, fuck, all right. I'm so sad that Inflict Wounds missed. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter now. I'm going to get my full spell slots back, so it's like, all right. Yeah, yeah. we're all going to get our, our funny stuff back. 
there were some really like I don't want to I don't want to obviously I can't say because I'll probably recycle some of these but like if you guys had gotten lost there were some really interesting outcomes. I mean, we did kind of get a little lost. You did. You went lost. You got lost once, but the more you got lost, the more weird shit would happen. Oh boy. Aw, maybe it would have been fun. If you, I mean, yeah, uh, but I, we would have never spoil, gotten out Can I here. spoil one thing that was Go kind ahead. of funny? If yes. you guys got lost three times in a row, you guys would have gotten all the way back to the start and would have to start over again. Oh, oh no! Oh. Nice. Oh, yeah, that was that was oh, the nice. three in a row. Head said, I hate that shit. Yeah, you literally you would have walked back. Happen. You literally would have walked right back to Catrail and they'd be like, Why are you back? And you'd be like, Fuck. So ah, next time we have I hate, lead the way. I hate when oh fuck. <laughs> I hate when games do that because it's like, oh, you're making me backtrack, you bitch. Oh yeah, oh god. <laughs> that was like you had you had to get three in a row though. Like it was like this well, is you get well, three like, in a row. I rolled well enough, so I was that gonna helped. say with our luck, it's still doable. It's even like with that fucking, fucking forest thing. and dragon age. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh god. Oh god, I hate that forest. That's the, that's the werewolf forest. Tree, yeah. I mean, we, we can't get lost now, right? Because we have the map all fixed up. Yeah, you have the map fixed and you found Shepherd Curl, so you're good. Hey, uh, I'll, Sarah, tell Caitlin to like fall asleep next Saturday. I don't know. What? I want to do more oh, Prince Division. Also, just don't wake up. Just stay do asleep. It. it just depends on what Monty and Connor want to do. Connor. That's all. all you have to I do think, is create a hostage I think, situation. I think Connor yeah, has been sitting. Lanny. Yeah, I think Connor's been like literally sitting on running a boss fight for like almost. Yeah. A month. Oh, they're so, at the boss. I mean, they're standing right in front of him. I mean, don't get me wrong, Bosco. I would love to like get it so we can at least get Tannis back, but also Monty's gonna be in LA. She should get to rest. Yeah. She's, she's already she gonna should, be doing she the should Wednesday get to rest. show from uh, LA. You may as well let her have her Saturdays. She'll be fine. We'll take good care of her. Let her have yeah. a sat. Let her. Right, let Monty. Her have this, Saturday. Hey, yeah. by the way, this is the last time you are running D and D in Canada. Not the last time. I'm coming back. Or the Ever. <laughs> Who says you're getting on that plane, Monty? Ah, no. Don't let me if get kidnapped. We like you chat. enough. We're not going to let you leave. I, I think I think the actual country will be upset with that conclusion. They would you have to figure it out. About the Hotel California. You can check remember out what happened. Remember how the Dark Lord Bosco stole your chat and stole Mr. X? Well, now I'm just stealing straight up you. you stole oh my god! For me. You stole literally everyone. I did. Oh I stole god. your Doritos. You did, but I got them back. I got my Doritos That's fine. back. That's fair. I didn't like them anyway. They were normal flavored. So, oh, then know. I did like them. Never mind. I want them back. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. But I'm gonna yes, take Monty no. to Yellowstone we'll be, we'll be, for no reason. We will play. Uh, be playing. Um, Unexpectables. Unexpectables, yeah. I'll be, I'll be. Running and you'll do there. one Prince Division while you're here. Yes, I'll be doing one. Prince you'll Division. be doing the 25th. Yeah, yeah, let her, let her have the weekend off. It's fine. It's true. We'll have your, more time on the weekend to do stuff. On last Saturday. Oh no, I'll, we'll have Monty and I'll have to hang out because you'll be busy on Saturday. Yeah. As I said, you could walk down to round one for that Saturday. Uh, we, uh, you want to come, and so does Caitlin. Anyway, we should do the outros. Connor, do your. Yeah, time. we really should before we do scheduling. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, one second. Yeah. Your thing over to our beautiful, beautiful slideshow fan art, which has been amazing, you guys. For you guys who yeah. do fan art, you literally like contribute to a lot of the brain juices for a lot of these campaigns. Indeed. By the way, good scene at the end, Monty. Really well done. Yeah, I was, I was like, Shepard Cruel is interesting. I'll just say that much. I'm, I'm just complimenting you above game on a well played scene. There was one I NPC. There was one NPC there... I really wanted you guys to meet, and you guys didn't. But it's okay. It happens. Was the... wait, was it, was it, wait, was there was there a chance to meet other people? Oh yeah, there are a whole bunch of other different people you could have run into, or just things in general. Well, this guy been... seems like if he because he's directly in the way of the pathway I had to go. So this guy was we were going to see. You were gonna run into him, yeah. yeah. We might have missed the uh, old lady with the fortunes, but yeah, the old lady yeah. with the fortune was yeah. interesting. That was, that was like, you, I'm like, she's in the storage area, and then there's the two paths, and you guys are like, we want to go to the storage area. I'm like, oh, okay. All Yay. right, cool. Then Kel shouted out a greeting. <laughs> I, I just realized. Oh, Monty, we made Zen cry. Excellent. Uh... I just realized that now in the Prince Division universe, there was someone called Shepard, and there was someone called Rex. There, uh, listen, yeah. why uh -huh. do you think I said, listen, Shepard, that's Rex? 
I literally did that. Yep. Was I was asleep, so I couldn't comment. I know you couldn't, but I knew you were smiling behind the mic. I was. <laughs> and speaking of smiling, Arkhal, where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkhal. I will likely be continuing with Tales of Arise. Definitely continuing with Spider-Man and God of War now that their sequels have been announced. And then this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Colonel Cheru, where we are going through It Takes Two. And I am antagonizing her every step of the way with puns. That's it? Excellent. Uh, Bosco, where can they find you and what are you up to? At Ed Bosco V on both Instagram and Twitter right here on twitch.tv slash Ed Bosco. Props to the person who picked out the Bible verse in that role play session. Well done. Um, yeah, no, I was impressed. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. I see. Sarah, where can they find you and what are you getting out to? I'm on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with an E, Willia, and I'm just, I just want to get through this month. That's all. I got you, fam. Mm -hmm. That is You're doing totally great. fair. Uh, Monty, where can they find you? What are you, you up to? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter, and until the 30th, unfortunately, my streams are going to be on hiatus, but I will be back. Um, I'll be posting a lot of stuff to Twitter and I'll be keeping my eyes on my Discord as well as the Unexpectables Discord. Um, so thank you for your understanding. I really, really need a vacation and I need to get out of my house because I haven't for a very long time. So, yeah. I'm also yeah. scared because there are game shops in LA and I'm... <laughs> oh, there's a Monty. We're gonna have a good time. Oh no! Ooh, is that on the agenda? I know. Oh yeah. Agenda. Well, so spoiler alert for everybody who's here: we're putting together like an in-person game. It's gonna be a very small mm -hmm. group of people, but we're gonna rent out a room, hopefully a thematic room, probably over at Geeky Tees, and uh, oh, those it's gonna be great because awesome. Monty hasn't played in-person D and D in like two years. I I had my friends over recently. It was only three people. Oh but, okay. But like, it's I. I gotta think of what I want to run, like while I'm down there. Says you're gonna run something. Wait, I get to play. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, I think I because I have a one-off I could do. Oh fuck! I was ready to run. I know you were ready to run, but I was gonna surprise you. But spoiler. Oh. Yeah, sure. Oh. Boss is gonna I, drag you down and make you work. I figure it'd be more Listen, fun if you could just Arkolf, play. Listen, I I don't mind making one-offs. I don't mind like. I know, but just... wouldn't it be more fun to play with people it would in be person, nice. which is even more rare? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. See, I'm not heartless. Wow. Give it, oh, give geez. it, give it a few days. No, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised when the nah. stream is off. <laughs> you're going to be like, where's Bosco and what did you do to him? Yeah. Wow, that oh, shut it down. Uh, Sarah, where can they find you? Mine too. I already did. I already went. Monty, where can they find you? I already went too. Nice. Where can they find you, Arkov? I went first. Tell them and where they can, can find you. And you can find me at the place that I said. Connor, where can they find you? Uh, they can yeah. find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil, where I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, playing some tabletop or uh, trading card games on Tuesday. Fridays when I get together with my friends and play whatever I feel like playing. Saturdays I'm playing through the Yakuza series. We're starting Yakuza 5 Remastered next week. And Sunday tomorrow I'm going to be playing more Wildermyth. Funny, awesome game that has funny, cool stuff in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, be sure to check out Dead House Sonata and also my DMs Guild. Both of those links will be popping up in the chat real soon here. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, be sure to uh, head on over for all your dice and dice accessories needs to our sponsor for this evening's festivities. Die Hard Dice. Yeah. By the way, I just want to say the rainbow set they do have... They actually have multiple different rainbow set dice, so you Wait, can get... there are get... multiple versions of yeah. the gay dice? 
There's so many gay dice. There's like a D20 so that's gay. Dice. There oh is their, their pride set, which is all different colors. And then they have their normal plastic gay dice. There's a lot of options if you want gay dice. So definitely uh, check them out. The LGBTQs were feasting on dice, but not actually this year. Gay, 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 gay dice. Gay, 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 gay. Gay, 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 gay. Gay, gay, gay. It's in the dice. <laughs> <laughs> Solid oh, reference. Oh, man. I got that. I, I got that EA Sports reference. <laughs> you can also get in the dice. Uh... Die Hard Dice. Big. Big. Uh, you can also get in the dice uh, at dieharddice.com. And if you use the code THE UNEXPECTABLES, you can save 10% off your entire order. And some of that stuff gets thrown back to us so we can continue making these wonderful tabletop shows. It's true. For Thank you. you. Thank you for helping us out. Also, they just released new dice, didn't they? Uh, yes, the uh, it's the reticle set, I believe. It's sort of uh, yeah. Monty Monty inspired. Monty, do you Monty. have some already? I listen. I when I saw them, I literally kicked down Diana's front door and was like, "Diana!" <laughs> I, give a, I miss every day. So I'm hoping that perhaps I'll get my grubby little goblin hands on a on a set of those because they look really really cool and the colors are ah oh, they're so she cool can, she can send them to america you could use them here oh uh, i i should have them sent to my house but but maybe you'd they be have able them to have them here PhDs. you could actually uh, use them in person i know but i just i oh yeah i should pack some dice to use in person you, you oh need God. to pack dice oh we yes. have dice here but you should pack your dice i should well, pack my bosco dice, they yeah. sell they sell die hard dice at geeky tees maybe oh i know there. i'm well aware Ooh. i just don't know if they'll have that particular version because they're brand new yeah, they're great. We'll see. If they do, then <laughs> also, yeah, what if possible. Monty can get them? Monty might get them for free to like show off. Diana, <laughs> Diana, you know she. Diana, she got that hookup. She, yeah, Diana's very nice and has sent me some stuff. It's good because She's I like, like to see what the dice look like before you know. I'm like, hey, they, they're great. Like I like to have my grubby little. She might get them and be like, them. oh, they only roll ones. I hate these dice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll bring I'll bring some of my dice with me. That's oh, you know what else we should do? Uh, bits mm -hmm. and subs. Yes. Indeed. Let's see. Where did we leave off for these bits and subs? <laughs> Let's have a little look. See here. Uh, the Togs. Thank you for getting a tier one sub to Mike Crank. Kukalanish. Thank you for the one thousand bits. I was looking to make an overpowered turtle monk, but natural armor and unarmored defense don't stack. Sad face. Nope. Yeah. That's the only way to keep it balanced. Yeah, everything's got to have a weakness. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Indeed. If everyone's super. Nobody's no super. Is. Mm -hmm. Big piece pipe. Thank you for the one or the ten bits. Tally and Garrus are two of the best and deserve each other. Ash deserves to stay on Vamir. Uh, so look, she can turn it around, okay? So you know who deserves to die is Caden. It's fuck Caden. Because he was also Maybe. Karth in Knights of the Old Republic. So fuck Karth. Indeed. Luke the Lucas. I have a flat line for a second. Luke the Lucas, thank you for <laughs> the what? 10 bits. Kai Lang <laughs> once killed six Turians naked with only his sword. I believe it. That's crazy. Pusa Monkey, thank you for the 10 bits. I returned from the Renaissance Festival. I babysit my drunks and everyone got home. How goes the law keeping? Oh, you know, we're running through an old abandoned railway station. <laughs> Nearly died. Shit is, shit, shit is whack, yo. There be there be lights and shit. Uh, Pupusa monkey, thank you for the ten bits. Oh, level up TTV, thank you for the raid of eleven people. Hey, thank, you, thank so you. Yeah, terrifying Ray, thank you for the raid of nine people. Viridian Winter, thank you for the 100 bits. Kel should tell the ancient weave about the tower's bodyguard. Oh, he intends to. 
that'll be Mike. pretty funny. Phil was not going to tell the rest of the party, but he was going to tell Ivan. Uh, Viridian Winter, thank you for the one. Wait, yeah. Flustered Bun, thank you for the six bits. It's official. Bryant has played Candyland and made a friend. Whoa, don't use the F word on stream, okay? Whoa, I'm very sorry. F is for friends who do stuff together. You is what for I undead. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and is for never going to get it lift at all. You'll be cursed forever. Have fun. What I meant to say was Bryant made a f Whoa. That's that Whoa. is that is oh, inappropriate. Lord. I told you not to use that word. I didn't. Uh, you did. We I, had to bleep I, it I out. Used, You're lucky the, the unexpectable sensors that we just hired got it. Damn. Yeah, I, had so I had to bring I had to bring the crew that, in. Please. God, I have to mod the call too. Jesus. Lol. Uh, yeah, 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 Zen Lita. No, don't ban me for vocal language. Zen Lita, thank you for the 300 bits. The best RP moments are the ones that hit you in on a personal level out of nowhere. Well done, Monty. And I guess Bosco, too. Wow. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the... How in the world did you get your name out of that? <laughs> <laughs> Luke the Lucas, thank you for the 10 bits. Bosco, you're acting best in the world! Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I might have even made, like, a sort of kind of... Oh, I heard it. <laughs> Is that what it was? It was very quiet. It was very quiet. Yeah. Listen, I know it was quiet, but I can't... <laughs> I mean, if you want, I can press it for you. No, you don't have to do that. That's 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 okay. Because I feel like it's inappropriate because now it's just happening whenever. Okay, uh -oh. you can't bleep everything that I say. It sounds like the beep from the Alexander fight, and it's throwing me off so hard. Oh yeah, the time stop. <laughs> oh, it Jesus. does. Yeah. Fantastic, Callum. Thank you for the fifty bits. Imagine trying to play D and D with a bunch of will o' wisps. Dude, I was so tempted to be like, "Hey, I could." run a tabletop game for you. <laughs> I know you're wanting to do that in-universe one. I know. Unfortunately, will o suck at role-playing. Dude, I want to yeah. run the uh, undetectables for fucking <laughs> the Shepard. Undetectables? Oh, damn. Can you imagine how meta they'd be having our characters play other characters and have it be I, I would love to, like, DM an Unexpectables campaign in Prince Division. Oh, God. Oh God! Shoot. All right, Kel. Ah. So remember, you have to roll. You have to roll your your sneak attack as the as Birdman. Remember. Right. Uh, but it, but this might be yeah. supposed to be again Grackles. Uh, no, it's Greckles. Greckles. Birdman. Yeah. And you also change your voice, dude. It sounds like you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it better? There. That's yes. That sounds better. At least. And Greckles, the Birdman rogue. Yeah, now roll your sneak attack. You're holding the game up. You're like a caster, but worse. Uh, it's a bunch also, of Tannis, be ready when we come around to Panic's turn. Oh, God. Gibby would play Borky, wouldn't she? Because orcs. She sure fucking would, because she's got a thing for orcs. Tannis is just still a statue, but you guys have put, like, dice <laughs> in his hand. Yeah, yeah, he's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> you gently push him to make the dice roll on the table. He's our dice tower. Dwarf, could you handle that? Oh, uh, yeah. Hang on. Can you roll for him? Thanks, I appreciate it. All right. How did I roll another one? Did you really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I need to burn some sage in here, guys. <laughs> the ghost of Gary Gygax died in my room, I, and it's I can't. You can't make this shit up, ladies and gentlemen. Holy wow. shit. Connor, you are Will Wheaton, dude. <sighs> <Wow. laughs> Why would you be so hurtful? Why would I say something so courageous? And yet so true. <laughs> I want to die. So controversial <laughs> and yet so... so Magic brave. Ninjago, thank you for the 100 bits. That video conversation actually makes me wonder 
how introducing video games to someone in the, from the twenty from the twentieth century would go. Well, well, to be fair, we did not enter the twenty first century until two thousand. It's true. Video games existed in the twentieth. Mm hmm. I guess they're saying like early twentieth. And Fantastic Callum, thank you for the 100 bits. It's always <laughs> rare to see like Bryant use paladin spells like smite. Whenever you ask if he'll use them, he always answers, I smite. I get it. <sighs> and with that, that's what, that's what we're ending on? Yeah. <laughs> yep. God. I would explain video games if they were aware of what movies were. They're like movies you can interact with. That's what I literally did. I'm like, you can play like it's a movie, but you can control it. And some video games literally are just movies you interact Metal with. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. You just play that movie. Ah, oh, Sean. Jason. <laughs> yeah. Jason. Oh, right. Alan Wake is getting remastered. It's true. Oh. Sean. All right. Where do we want to? Where do we want to go? Uh, who's um, live right now? Well, Draco I have Draco. Can we raid Draco? Uh, we should raid. No, we should raid Therapod. Thera's not streaming. Oh, what a shame! Well, <laughs> you son of you asshole. Well, I guess we can raid Draco then. All right. Uh, Draco's actually taking care of my cats while I'm on my trip. There you go. So that'll be a nice surprise. Um, so how about the raid message? You don't kill the cats. Yeah, don't kill Monty's cats. There you go. Please don't kill the cats. Please, Please don't, don't kill, kill the cats. cats. Hey, don't, don't, don't kill Monty's kill cats. cats. Or feed Hob if you want a shorter message. <laughs> All Please right. don't kill the cats. Woo! Feed the Hob. Woo! Feed the Hob. Yeah, Mind the gob. So I guess I'll make sure I have the name right. The Hob be gobbling the food. The Hob jumped over the gob. Well, Monty is on the job. Well, I'm not working. They went I'm, to bed and I'm hit going. Their head. Well, Monty's on the vacation. Is more what it should be. There you go. All right, go. Bye, go. guys. Wow, Zen Lita called your cats a turkey cutlet. <gasps> I can't.